Austin, Texas, and all signs point skyward as Chris Sims leads a potent aerial attack featuring one of the country's top receiving corps. Roy Williams and B.J. Johnson were freshman phenoms. They're now sophomore sensations and have Texas jumping for joy. Standing in their way is Julius Peppers. The nation's sack master keys a North Carolina defense that hopes to shut down the skies over Austin. Mac Brown's Longhorn Express rolled in earlier to Austin. Even the youngest of fans know how to hook them horns. The barbecue is hot. The fans have been here early, and in the Lone Star State, it's all about football on a Saturday in September. Everything is big in the state of Texas, including the expectations for this football team. Coming in ranked sixth in the country, off to a 1-0 start. It's the Longhorns home at Darrell K. Royal Memorial Stadium against the Tar Heels of North Carolina. Hi again, everybody. I'm Brad Nessler, and welcome to Austin. Coming in is North Carolina, a team searching for itself right now at 0-2 under a first-year head coach in John Bunning. For Texas and Mac Brown, they have never been 2-0 since he's been here. In fact, it's been five years since they've started the season with a 2-0 mark. That's what they're looking for today. My partner's Bob Greasy as we talk to you about what we're looking for. I mentioned John Bunning, new coach at Carolina, new system, maybe a new quarterback before the day's over, huh? Well, inconsistency has been the theme at North Carolina for their quarterbacks this season. Ronald Curry, who has started 22 games in his career off and on, is a true senior, uh, has had inconsistency this year, has not played well. Darian Durant, a, a redshirt freshman, has come in in both games and has played well. So uh, they say that he may play some today. It depends on how Ronald Curry starts out. Mac Brown doesn't have that problem with Texas, does he? <laughs> He's got two quarterbacks that probably start for 80% of the college's Division I-A. Major Applewhite has started 27 games over his career, 40 career uh, records at, at UT, and he's the backup. The starter is Chris Sims, a young kid that has a, a lot of uh, uh, accolations and a lot of uh, things coming out of high school. Seven starts, this is his eighth start. He led the uh, league in passing last year. They've got a situation at quarterback that any coach would love to have in Division I. Well, we talked about expectations because in Austin, Texas, they haven't won a national championship in 31 years. But there's a reason they left that comma behind 1970. John and Terry in New York, and then we'll be back to kick it off. Thank you very much, Brad. Coach, Coach Brown, you're trying to get to 2 0. That's the goal. How much have you driven to your football team that they have to play North Carolina with intensity and respect? Lynn, one of the things we've learned here everybody that comes into Austin gives us their best shot. We can't worry about the opponent. We've got to be a tough, well coached football team today. They've got a great player on their defensive side, Julius Peppers. Is the play of your offensive line maybe your number one concern today? Well, it, it, it's not just him. We, we can't handle Julius with the offensive line. We've got to handle him with a lot of guys, Lynn. So uh, he's going to make his plays. we just got to make sure we don't let him disrupt our entire offense. Coach, thank you. Good luck this afternoon. Thank you, Lynn. Brad? All right, Swanee, Texas won the toss. They deferred. North Carolina will receive. And that means that Michael Waddell and Kevin Knight will be back deep. Dan Smith got it teed up. About 82,000 on hand, and North Carolina coming into a hornet's nest because right now Texas looking for its 10th straight win at home. And over those 17 and two games, they've beaten people by an average of 45 to 10. Carolina will have to start from the 20. Waddell watches it go through the end zone. Ronald Curry, the guy that Bob Greasy talked about, his career passing numbers not that impressive really, although. Overall, in total offense, he's a guy that can scare you. More interceptions than touchdowns. And really, 50% passing over a career is not that good. But he does bring excitement, and he, and he has not played as well this year as he has last year. Last year was probably his best year at Carolina. So the Tar Heels work from their own 20-yard line. Bailey, the motion man. Here's a give to the tailback, Willie Parker. Parker looking for the corner. Got out across the 25. Nice run. Got about seven. North Carolina offensively. The group in front of Ronald Curry is a question mark. Woofter, Morford, Metz, Terry, and McNeil. Not a lot of experience. Not a lot of depth on their offensive line. Metz probably the best in there at center. Three new starters in that offensive line. Brown at the tight end. Hedgecock the starter. 
Parker, you've seen carry. There's Metz the center. And both wideouts joined now by Chesley Borders to the top of your screen. It is Curry from the gun. Looks like a quarterback draw. Broke one tackle, heading to the sticks. Got there. There's what he does best. And it's a first down North Carolina as he scrambled for eight yards against the Texas defense. That's a good one. Thornton and Redding on the ends. Tubbs and Gordon are the inside guys trying to replace Hampton and Rodgers, who were sensational there in years past for Texas. The linebacking Cordini Lewis is the captain over there. He's making his 40th start. Jones and Rawls flank him. The secondary's a good one. Quentin Jammers, an All-American. Basher, Brooks, and Babers round out the secondary for the Horns. Now eight starters return from a defense that was very good last year. They come up close, showing blitz. They're going to give it to the fullback. And Richard Moore, who checked in after Hedgecock got the start, picks up about a yard. That's it. Everick Rawls made the tackle. The strength of this Carolina offense, as you mentioned, not the offensive line, which is young and inexperienced, but outside at the wide receiver, wide receiver position and the quarterback, the potential of the quarterback. So Gary Tranquil telling us earlier in the week that he's going to try and get outside and put some pressure on the corners of Texas. Even though they're good, that's where the strength is for North Carolina. Well, that one's not only good, he gets bored sometimes. <laughs> they're so good. They don't go his way much. Three wide outs. And whistle stop play. It looked like as if Curry was wanting to get outside at that time. Get outside and throw Time out on the field. North Carolina. North Carolina took a timeout. It must have been called from the sideline or one of the wide receivers because Curry wasn't calling it. So North Carolina with the ball. No score early. Our sprint. PCS game facts. This is the eighth meeting between these two teams. First time in the regular season since 52. The last time they got together was a bowl game in El Paso. Sun Bowl. Texas won that. And Mac Brown was on the losing end for Carolina. Priest Holmes had a four touchdown game in that 35-31 Texas win. Second down and nine following the timeout. So Curry with three wideouts to the top of your screen. He's going to roll that way to throw. And throws short over the middle. Incomplete. Intended for Bosley Allen and broken up by Roderick Bader. Third down and roll. They got outside the pocket, which is giving the offensive line some time and some angles to block these uh, defensive linemen with. You see the, uh, the game inside, steps up in the pocket, just kind of shoves it. You know, Ronald Curry is a laid-back, easy-going guy. I, I sometimes want him to be more energetic, more fiery. Or take charge. Let's see if they can take charge on a third down and nine. Carolina really struggled on their third down conversions this year. 19%. Waiting too long. You can't wait that long. D.D. Lewis with a sack. And the captain of the defense, D.D. Lewis, the senior out of Houston, comes up with a big play. So you hit the nail on the head, Brad. The quarterbacks have to have a little clock in their in their head and said, all right, this is too long. I can't expect my line to block any longer than this. I've got to throw it or I've got to take off. Brings up a punting situation. John Lafferty to kick. Nathan Basher is a dangerous return man, and he should get good field position out of this. High snap. Basher backs up to the 32. Got a block. Across the 45, near the 46-yard line. Good field position. Sure is. 42-yard kick, a 14-yard run back. And so Texas, the first time they touch it, is going to have a great spot on the field, their own 46-yard line. There's Chris Sims, who Bob talked about in the open. A 6'5 left-hander. There's his numbers from last year. And he really came on at the end of the season. After Major Applewhite suffered an injury, Chris got the opening, and he shut that opening, at least for now. Although we might see both of them before the first half is over. Two tight end set is how Texas will line up first, as Sims has a look from the 46-yard line. Victor Ike, the single setback. Victor's going to get the call, and he goes down. Loss on the play. Nice job of stretching it out by the North Carolina defense. The big eaters up front, there's a couple big ones. Mike Williams <laughs> is huge, 335. He'll 
Guard the backside of Sims, Kirk Hughes, Anderson, Holloway, and Doan across the front. The wide receivers, tight ends, and backs. Brock Edwards starts at the tight end. Trissel, the fullback, you've seen Ike. And Roy Williams and B.J. Johnson are as two as good a sophomores as you'll ever see. And there's Mike Williams, all 339 pounds of it. A loss on the play of one, second down at 11. They'll try to run again, and this time it works better. In the North Carolina Territory, seven-yard pickup. Dexter Reed and David Thornton made the tackle. Defensively, everybody knows about Julius Peppers. Evans is no slouch. Sims will be an NFL player, and Chapman's the other defensive tackle. Strength, of, strength of the team. Right no there. doubt about it. Rosita Perry, Quincy Monk, David Thornton, who just made that tackle, is their leading tackler right now. And in the secondary, Waddell, a lot of speed. Greenwood and Reed, the safeties. Errol Hood mans the other corner. Third down, and about four for Sims and the Longhorn offense. Chris back, first throw, batted down. And it was Joey Evans, the defensive end from the other side, that swatted it away. Chris was kidding with us when we talked to, with him the other day. He said, you know, you guys did my first touchdown pass. I said, I remember it. And he said, but my first two passes were batted down. Here I am, 6'5". I can't get it over the lineman's head. And he turns around and throws right, one, right into Joey Evans' hands that time. So it's three and out for Texas, and they waste a good field position. Ryan Bradford to kick. Michael Waddell is back deep. High snap. Kind of a lazy punt. Waddell's going to get out of the way and let it go. And it takes a Carolina bounce across the 40, uh, the 15 after the 16-yard line. So North Carolina's got it back. We're early here in Austin with no score. ABC Sports presentation of college football brought to you by Chevy Trucks, the most dependable, longest-lasting trucks on the road. Valvoline's Max Life, the first motor oil formulated for higher mileage engines. And Morgan Stanley, formerly Morgan Stanley Dean Witter. Move your money, get well connected. From the capital of the Lone Star State, Austin, Texas, no score. John Bunning in his first year as head coach at North Carolina. I like John. I think he's going to do a good job. Played 11 years in the NFL as an overachieving linebacker for the Philadelphia Eagles, and he wants his team to do likewise and overachieve. He's a Carolina alumnus and uh, says this is his dream job, but it hasn't been a dream start, 0-2, and on the road for the third straight week against the sixth-ranked team in the country. Here's Parker. Willie Parker had a long touchdown run. It was the majority of their offense in their loss to Maryland last week. This time, he's wrapped up after a short game. Ahmad Brooks and Dee Lewis in on the stop. Second down and eight coming up. There's Dee Dee Lewis. DeAndre DeWayne busts the DD. Senior, and he's the heart and soul of their defense. For sure. He started 40 straight games, and he is the leader on that defensive side. Second down and eight, and Curry's in the gun. Going to swing it out, low pass. Texas was all over at any place. Sam Aiken, the intended receiver. Let's check in Times Square Stadium in New York. So the Badgers trying to slow down that juggernaut of Fresno State. Yeah, that's, uh, they're going to sneak up on Wisconsin <laughs> after nope. two wins. Third down and eight. Here comes a blitz. Curry on a slant. It's intercepted. Picked off, and it might be a touchdown down the sideline. It is. Curry running touchdown. Watch list as one of the great line players in college football. And he just put a big statistic in his category, an interception return for a touchdown. Dusty Mangum, the true freshman in for the point after. 7-0, Longhorn. Nine minutes, 58 seconds remaining in the first quarter. He's trying to hit one of the receivers over here running a slant, but he doesn't see Corey Redding down, and Redding is going to drop out of the defensive line. Right there, you see him dropping back. And there's Redding right there to pick it off. 
Boy, when Carl Reese drew up zone blitz on the board in the Longhorns locker room, he never in a million years thought it was going to end up this good. This is just tough. This is tough for a quarterback to anticipate this. This is what you call a zone blitz. Defensive lineman dropping off and other guys rushing in his area. This is a tough read for any quarterback that's in there. For Carolina's two or for Texas's right. two quarterbacks, that's a tough read. And a great run back and acrobatic move at about the three-yard line to get in, 7-0. On a 22-yard interception return for the score. Boy, and that's exactly what North Carolina had hoped to do. Exactly, exactly what they didn't need. Carolina, to have a chance in this game on the road, needs a defensive score and the defense to set up a score and also their special teams to score and set up a score. Texas beats them to it. Now you wonder how long Ronald Curry will be in there after yeah. that miscue. Yeah, like I say, that's a tough read, though. Yep. That's 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 tough. Although the other two passes that Curry threw before that one, they weren't pretty. They either. weren't pretty. Dan Smith's got it teed up. There's Durant over on the sideline. Dan Smith, who joined the team a week ago Wednesday as a walk-on, is the kickoff man for the Longhorns. Kevin Knight, three yards deep, he'll bring it out. Maybe shouldn't have. Out to the 16, he's swarmed under right there, and Carolina will start from the exact same spot. Swanee? Well, Brad, you're talking about Ronald Curry, and, and, and Bob points out that's a tough read, but one of the tough things in the maturation of this young man is that he's also a basketball player. He hasn't really dedicated himself to playing the game of football, and it's hard to do that, especially at the quarterback position when there's so much you have to know and learn. This was the first summer he didn't work out with the basketball team, and instead he worked out with the football team. And one of the things he's going to have to do is develop some leadership and some maturity and understanding of this game in a hurry to give North Carolina a chance for a good season. Well, you know, the amazing thing is, is when Ronald Curry and Julius Peppers ended their football careers last year and joined Matt Doherty's basketball team, North Carolina shot right up the list and ended up being number one in the country. So he can do it on the basketball court. Peppers can do it as a scorer and a big hoss. He's not going to play basketball this year. But he just can't quite translate that out here in the football field. I, I think playing ba as a quarterback playing basketball and football, I think it's easier to do basketball than it is football. In football, you have to work with your receivers not only in spring practice, but also in the summer. That's where you get a lot of your timing, a lot of your footwork, and a lot of your releases. And uh, this is the first summer that he has done that. You uh, you did it both at Purdue for, what, two years, didn't you? Two years, and then after that, I gave it up because I knew that uh, basketball, I wasn't going anywhere. <laughs> and I was just guarding, I was guarding the Kazzy Russells of the world. <laughs> and feeding Rick Mount. <laughs> and feeding Rick Mount, that's right. <laughs> we had it offside on the kick, so we'll try it again. Gives us a chance to have some fun and talk about Ronald Curry's situation and we'll see how his situation improves after this next kick. Smith's got a teed again and they should get better field position out of this. On the goal line this time, Knight hit about the same spot. They get about maybe a yard difference out of it. We talked about Julius Peppers and Ronald Curry and their basketball prowess, and they can both do it on the hard court, that's for sure. Julius Peppers, I did a game last year when he had 14 points and 10 rebounds, and he went on the NCAA tournament to have even better numbers, and Ronald Curry was their point man, a good point man that not only can shoot from the outside, but can penetrate as well. So they're very talented young fellas. And right now, he's just hoping that he can find a three-point play somewhere, not a fumble. Loss of about three. Andre Williams mishandled the pitch. And so far, North Carolina can't get anything going on offense. See, this is what Carolina doesn't need. You're on the road. You just had a big turnover on offense. And you need somebody to step up and do something positive. This lack of confidence in their offense. All right, here we go again. You know, we're going to get another loss. You know, on the road, the offense uh, gave one up. You need some positive stuff. And that's what John Bunning wants to instill in this team. Loss of three, second and 13. They go with a draw play. This time Williams holds on to it. And he got back near the original line of scrimmage. Everick Rawls made the tackle. 
And it's going to bring up another third and long situation. As I said, third down has been horrible to them this year. And they've got a long ways to go. As you see, our first down marker out at about the 33-yard line. And our first and 10 presented by Chevy Trucks. So they're going to have to earn this first down. I like that first and 10. Why did we have that 10, 20 years ago? <laughs> Technology, my man. Yes, sir. Third down and 10. Curry's going to call a timeout. Didn't like the set he had with him in the shotgun, and there goes their second timeout, and we still have 8 minutes and 21 seconds remaining in the first quarter. All right, John, here at 7 nothing, Texas. Talked to Barry Alvarez the other day. He thinks that kid at Fresno State's as good as Joey Harrington at Oregon that he just saw last week. Car, yeah, I like him a lot. Third down, 10. After the timeout, see what North Carolina came up with. Three wide outs for Curry. They're going to keep it on the ground. Williams looking for room, trying to get to the corner. He won't even get to the first down. Uh, the line of scrimmage, rather. Nice pursuit. Maurice Gordon came in, forced the play, and Dakari Pearson finally cleaned up to make the tackle. They've had third and long on all four of their third down situations, and I don't blame them. Backed up early in the game. Your quarterback's not playing well. He's 0-3 with a sack and an interception that was returned for a touchdown. So they'll have to punt again. And last time, Lafferty hit a 42-yarder, but Basher took it 14 the other way. High snap. Long spiral. Basher back at the 35. Got the first block, and now he's got a little bit of room. Basher across midfield. Basher down the sideline with a convoy. He's going to take it. No, he stepped out of bounds. Lost his balance, stepped out of bounds on the sideline, but he's all the way down inside the 10 down to the six yard line a 59 yard punt return but texas has got it on offense and defense and one of the things that mac brown wanted to do is have some special teams in the past when they've come here they've, they've tried to get 0 2 a couple years ago against nc state they had three block punts early in the year they want to dominate on special teams as well Watch, there's going to be a wall over here to the right side. See all of the burnt orange jerseys. Perfect block there. Another Basher, there. Basher's got to kick himself now. For oh, him. boy. It was a momentum. He could have jumped <laughs> higher and jumped over the Carolina defender. First and goal from the five. So it's first and goal for the Longhorn offense at the five-yard line. Victor Ike, the tailback. Carolina might have jumped in the neutral zone. They did. And that's going to move it closer to the Carolina goal line. Looked like David Thornton, the linebacker, was trying to get in a gap there and came in a bit too early. Ron Cherry is our referee. There's the offside call against the Tar Heels. Dead ball. Offside. Defense. Have to just sit a goal. Still first down. Now you're in running range. You got four cracks from the two and a half. Well, this is a situation offensively. You can do just about anything yep. you want. Call any play you want. They've scored 32 straight times in the red zone. Last week, they were a perfect six for six. First and goal outside the two. Ike. Not quite. Unless we get a late call, no touchdown. Defonte Coleman and Julius Peppers are going to get off the bottom of that heap. And it'll be second down to go. And this right here is why quarterbacks in college or in pros don't call their own plays because four players for Texas just came into the game and five players <laughs> for Carolina came in the game. I mean... To send that many plays in, you players, you got to have a play with it. Got the big tail back now, Williams, but it's Sims over the top. Chris is in. Touchdown, Texas. <laughs> Penalty marker down at the line of scrimmage, however. If Carolina jumped again, it isn't going to matter. I think they did. From offside, yeah. on the deep. By rule, the penalty is the crime for the touchdown. 
Chris Sims got that big 6-5 frame in the air and tucked his head over for the touchdown. Well, Chris Sims scored the touchdown, but it was set up by the special teams and the punt return by Vashon. I don't like that. I don't like quarterbacks going over the top, getting their, having their head exposed to linebackers that can just come in there and whack them. Phil and Diana are watching this at home going, don't hurt my baby boy. <laughs> Dusty Mangum. Well, Diana is here. <laughs> Phil's, Phil's uh, on the road watching. There's a kick, and it's good. Big smile by the big quarterback. And as Bob said, the punt returns what got him there. Great start for Mac Brown's team. 14 to nothing. Don't forget, it's a big triple header. Bebo will even be watching the next two games after this one. Coming up next, it'll be number 10, Michigan, battling last year's Rose Bowl champs, the number 15 Huskies of Washington. That's next on ABC. Keith and Tim will be out there to bring you that one. And then don't forget tonight, it's Notre Dame and Nebraska. Big 12's got some great masks. Boy, do they do. Uh, they do. Bebo, they've got the... Uh, the Boomer Schooner yep. over there in Oklahoma. Then they got Ralphie in Colorado. <laughs> <laughs> of all the of all the uh, of, of all the uh, mascots, I think Ralphie is my favorite. Bevo looks a little lethargic to me today. Oh, I don't know if it's the heat. Oh, Be Bevo, <laughs> Bevo, but that, is that a great shot or what? Huh? You boys going out there and play your game. And I'll, just, just, and I'll just lay around here and be your mascot. Somebody better tell him where his predecessors are hanging on the walls in the locker room. <laughs> wake him up a little bit. <laughs> There's a lot of them hanging around. They got around. a lot of them around. <laughs> Dan Smith's got it teed up again. He's been a busy kicker, and we still have 6.45 to go in the first quarter. Texas has got two touchdowns, 14 points, on eight yards of total offense. Wow. Defense scored one. Front return got him to the five. Penalty got him to the two and a half. Chris Sims got him the last yard the hard way. And that offense, we've been telling everybody, is one of the best around. Explosive and all of those, but they haven't had to do anything. They don't even need to. Smith's kick. Knight camps under it, two yards deep. He's going to keep working it until he gets it right. Knight, this time, got the corner across the 20. Tagged out of bounds at about the 23-yard line. Let's take a look at our Pacific Life game summary. This is what we were talking about, Ronald Curry. Knocked down first by D.D. Lewis, then intercepted by Corey Redding for a touchdown. Vasher back at the 35. Got the first block. And then Vasher going the other way with a punt return. Chris Sims for the score, and it's 14 to nothing. Curry is 0 for 3. Play action. Down he goes again, and it's Corey Redding. Oh, boy. He's having a game so far. Well, we told you that this offensive line is new, and either Redding's working against the redshirt freshman in O'Neal, number 76, just comes around, fights him around, and that, he didn't have a chance that time. Nope. You know, the thing that you have to realize if you've got a young, inexperienced offensive line is you can't wait. You've got to get rid of them. And a first down on the ground. Chesley Borders getting out there to pick up the first. And it, everything you do offensively with a weak offensive line versus a strong defensive line is quick. Throw quick or get outside the pocket. To look at the three wide receivers to the wide side. He just does a nice job of avoiding some guys that were not blocked that should have been. Right. Sam Aiken was out there trying to throw him a block and didn't get anybody. But Borders just did it himself. And it's right at the mark. And I think they're making sure because they don't have to bring the chains out. They're about uh, a couple inches shy of the first down. Brad and Bob, if uh, North Carolina's going to get back in this ball game, I think we're seeing early on they're not going to be able to go toe-to-toe -to -toe with the University of Texas. What they're going to need 
of the receivers and backs to make some big plays. Uh, they just can't sustain it. You know, they've got to worry about a lot of tactical and strategic things in this ball game. Don't look for them to score a touchdown unless it's a it's a two drive score for a touchdown. But in that two drives, they've got to gain some real estate in the exchange of the ball. Right. Uh, there's been two big plays made, and Texas made them both. One on defense, one on special teams. Third down inches. Boy, he didn't get much. He didn't need much. But Curry just puts his head down and picks up the first down. So they finally get a little bit of breathing room out near the 34-yard line. That's where they'll move the sticks. With 5.55 remaining in the first quarter. Mac Brown has gotten this defense a little quicker and a little faster. They lost Casey Hampton and Sean Rogers of two big defensive tackles inside. So they've gone a little bit quicker. They've got four corners playing in the secondary. Two of them are at the, the strong safety and the weak safety, and the other two are out at the corner. So they can run and they can tackle. Penalty markers down before the play. And I think it's a clock problem. Let's see if it's John Bunning is. On the offense. Coach Bunning not happy with the delay of game. Well, he wanted to know when you st started the clock. He thinks they started it too quickly. Uh, and they, again, the quarterback in the huddle has always got, when you're in the huddle, you look at the end of the field and see the 25-second clock because you're the one, ultimately, has got to either get him in and get him out or take a timeout. There you go. Right here. So it's first and 15. Just when I said they had some better field position to work, they backed themselves up with a penalty. Play action for Curry. Got rid of this one in time, and a nice pass complete out across the 45. And it's Sam Aiken, a pickup of 19. That time, Ronald on rhythm delivered a nice throw. Yeah, and, 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 and just drop back and throw. Single coverage out here, just going to go down and break off to the outside. The key here, though, play action, first down, get some time to play. Perfect throw, good route. So another North Carolina first down. Shotgun, play action, Curry trying to improvise, throws deep on the sideline for Corey Bailey, and it's incomplete. Texas had that one smelled out pretty well defensively, and Curry had to throw off balance. And he's going against a pretty good corner, as yeah. we've already said it, and Quentin Jammer. Take a look at the end here. It's going to be a little bit outside, a little bit wide. But I like the call. I like the play. First down, if you're going to throw is from the pocket, is your best opportunity. So at least Jammer had to stay awake over there. They threw his way. Aiken now in motion. And now it's a quarterback keeper off a fake draw from the shotgun. And Curry did well to get the five he got. Jermaine Anderson finally knocked him off his pins. But North Carolina in Texas territory for the first time today. This looks like one of those uh, Northwestern things. Uh -huh. Fake to the running back and keep it yourself. The, deep, the offensive lineman got stuffed back. I don't know who that was. Was Woofter or, uh, or uh, Anderson or whoever it was. But Ronald Curry was tripped up by one of his own offensive linemen being pushed back in the backfield. Did a great job of getting his hand down and keeping his balance. Now it's third and five. Here's the rollout. Going to lob one down there, and running under it is Borders. He's got it. That's what they have to do more of. Get outside the pocket to buy more time. Very good outside the pocket. And he throws the long ball well. Three receivers, single coverage. Did it on Jammers, too. On Quentin Jammer. Yep. Laid it up. Gave him time to make a play. Good drive here for Carolina. They're inside the Texas 20. Curry rolls to throw again. Fires incomplete. Intended for Corey Bailey, who was looking for a pass interference call and didn't get it. But Bailey was just sitting there. Lenny could... Swanee could uh, comment on this, but he just went down and just stayed there. Didn't come back, didn't get to the sideline, and uh, 
That time Curry had to throw the ball away to prevent an interception. You're right, Bob. It's one of the things receivers have to work on diligently all the time. you got to come back to the ball. Anytime you don't, you create a situation where the defensive back can step in front of that pass. Curry, quarterback draw. You can just see it coming for some reason. And he broke the tackle and got outside. Curry trying to get to the end zone. Touchdown. Good looking run. 20 yards for Ronald Curry on a quarterback draw. Good looking drive. And Gary Tranquil pulling out the plays on that drive to make Ronald Curry look good. The quarterback draws. The little, the little faking up the middle. The sprint out. The throw the ball on the run. This looks like Ronald Curry from last year and the years before. Breaking a the tackle there. Nice and play. And a good move on Brooks. Ronald Curry. That's going to be a huge jolt of confidence for this Tar Heel team. They needed something to go right, and it did. And to that man right there. Jeff Reed with a point after. Ronald Curry needed something good to happen to him, and he just got it. He's liking the conversation upstairs right now with the way that drive went. Carolina with much more offense than Texas, but Texas with a lead, courtesy of a punt return that almost scored and an interception return that did. 14 to 7. It's been it's been tough for Ronald Curry during football anyway at, at Carolina. The last three years, he's had three different offensive coordinators yep. to work with and three different systems. That's like the same plays, but you're talking French in sophomore, <laughs> German your junior year, and Spanish your senior year. I mean, it's, it's like the same plays, but it's learning the words to the same plays we've always had around here. It's not easy. And John's talking to him about the clock, you know, starting the clock too quickly. That's one of the things I think they ought to do, and they talked about it a lot, is go to the, the NFL. The pros have a 40, 40, 25 second clock. Right. And as soon as the ball, the play is ended, they start the 40 second clock. Dave Perry talked with us and said that it was discussed a 45 second clock for college and was very close. We might see that in the near future. The thing it does, it gives consistency from one week to the next from the referee. Exactly. Some, some mark the ball ready for play quicker than others mark it. And a 40-second clock, as soon as the ball's dead, would, would get some cons cons consistency. Chris Bender to kick. And a good kick it is. Ike from the two. Uh, across the 30, down the sideline. Bumped out, almost got to midfield. Bender, the kicker, had to make the tackle. A 44-yard kick return. So right now, special teams is killing North Carolina. You said it, Brad. They're doing everything they need to do. There is no blue jerseys down inside the 25-yard line. They've done a great job of keeping them out, and then Ike does a nice job of getting, finding the hole and getting around the side. You know, I, I'd like to start every drive from my 45-yard line. Yeah, you're not I mean, kidding. I mean, you're almost to midfield. It's almost like you're looking downhill. And this is a Texas offense that hasn't gotten the first down yet today with three and a half minutes to go in the first quarter, but they have a touchdown lead. Again, North Carolina jumps into the neutral zone. It's going to be a free five yards, and I think you're going to have to start giving Chris some credit for something his dad did so well. His cadence has got to be messing up the North Carolina front wall because they keep falling out of their stances in there. And this is something I, I, I don't think enough, enough colleges work on is the cadence to the line of scrimmage and trying to use it to your advantage. And, 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 on the defense, I've done penalty, replay first down. And nice. those, are, those are the guys you can get the, 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 the most. And that's the defensive tackles, the linemen, right close to you because the inflection of right. your voice, they can hear it the best. You might say, well, you know, they can see the football. Why they move? They're not looking at the ball a lot of times. They're looking for you. They're, they're listening to you. So at the midfield strike, first down and five. And off. And there they've got a first down. Ivan Williams got about six. We've talked about Chris Sims, and obviously everybody knows Bill's his dad. We talked to him about how often he talks to dad on the phone. I talked to dad uh, about.
I don't know. It seems a lot lately. I don't know. He seems like he's calling me every day. I'm starting to worry about him. <laughs> uh, usually about three or four times a week. Any football talk in there? Uh, it's always football talk. He asks me how I'm doing in school, and we talk about that for about two or three minutes, and then the rest of the conversation is always about football. <laughs> <laughs> I love that comment. The question came from Bob, <laughs> and Bob knows well because he and Brian talk pretty frequently as well, and yeah. a lot of football jabber there, too. Yeah, I, it was interesting. I just couldn't pass up the opportunity <laughs> to say, so how does Phil handle it with you? I know what Brian and I were talking. When he was at Michigan, it was... It was, uh, hey, uh, I need some money. Uh, <laughs> now you call him and say, hey, I need some yeah, money. Yeah, <laughs> now I call him and say, hey, send some this way. <laughs> this penalty is against Texas. A holding call. On the offense. Ten yards from the previous spot. Still first down. Yeah, there, I don't know. Yeah, he got a... Had a little bit of the jersey. He's Holloway, 61 at the very end, but I don't know if it, I don't know if that was the call. If it was. It was a pretty loose one. Yep. Brett Robin, the third down back, is in on a first down at 20. He's good out of the backfield, and he was the intended receiver on the screen. And Chris Sims took a shot after letting go of the football from Ryan Sims. Well read by the North Carolina defense. It was. It was man coverage. And, and, and the linebacker assigned to the coverage was right with him. It's a screen pass. This is a nice incompletion by Chris. You don't want to throw that ball where he was because he was covered and he could have been had picked it off. That was Sims on Sims. A 1M hitting a 2M. Ivan Williams now in at the tailback spot. Texas only has 15 yards out of their seven offensive plays. draw play. Williams puts his head down. Carolina stays home and Ryan Sims made that play. Yeah. Okay. The strength of this Carolina team is this defense yep. and their front seven. And the attitude with the way the game has gone is that the defense hasn't been on the field much to do anything and then they're down 14 to 7 and say hey come on let's go out there and play and stop these guys. And they're they're, uh, they're playing tough. Third down and 18. Victor Wright back in there as a single setback. The wide receivers we've talked about so much haven't come into play yet. Sims with time, batted down again. And Chris goes down again. Ryan Sims had quite a series there. He hit the quarterback, he made a tackle, and he just knocked down a pass. He's feeling it right now. Sims had six sacks last year. Take a look at the pressure. They've got some guys that can rush the passer. A little game on this side. Had three guys rushing the quarterback, and then Sims didn't get a very good rush, and he just jumped. And that's a, something the defensive linemen don't do enough of. If you're not getting a good rush, stand there and jump when the quarterback throws the football. Brian Bradford to punt. Sam Aiken camps under it at the nine-yard line. Aiken weaving his way only to the 14. Nice coverage by the Longhorn special teams. Leffler made the stop on Aiken. Coming up next Saturday, ABC Sports brings you great college football regional action at 3.30 Eastern. Some of you will see Notre Dame and Purdue. And we'll be down the Orange Bowl, Miami and Washington. The only blemish on Miami's record last year came at the hands of the Huskies. They'll be laying for them down in South Florida. Check your local listings for the game in your area. North Carolina's rushing touchdowns for a quarterback. Ronald's added one more to the list today with his 20-yard quarterback draw. So he's about to move in to a tie for the top spot the next time he carries it across the goal line. Right now, he's got his team in the football game, 14-7. A minute 20 as he changes the play up. Hurry up. Didn't get it off. Too much time. Even the center knew that that clock was running in his head, and he kind of shuffled the ball a little bit before the actual snap. Well, prior to the snap, snap infraction on the offense. Five yards. Well, that's, first down. That, that was the call. Yeah, and that's 
all relates to the to the check off at the line of scrimmage and the clock running down. You just have to be a little bit quicker. If you go to check off, you got to do it quicker and get the ball snapped. Back at the nine, first and 15. Curry dropped the ball, scoops it up. Now he's trying to do something with it. And he can only get to the sideline and run out of bounds at about the 10. Now that was dangerous. Almost dropped it right in the end zone. Well, I, I don't know how you drop the ball. I mean, I, all quarterbacks drop the ball, but when you just get it from center and you're going to hand it off. Uh, the, I know what happened. The, the fullback in front of him knocked it out of his hand. We can see that again maybe from the end zone. You might see the fullback knocked it, knocked it out of his hand. Watch this. Right there. Yep, the ball did a little spin wheel the and he had to scoop it up. Yeah. Moore knocked it out of his hands on his way by. On a second and 13, they just got to get back to the original line of scrimmage. You know, Andre the, Williams. You know, the coaching point there is the quarterback should always have the ball in his midsection. Should hit the ball, pull it in, let everybody go by, and then dish it back out. A nice, nice fake is one thing, but uh, you don't want to lose the handle. You, know, you teach that in, in high school and uh, grade school going along is how to handle the ball and the fullback not coming too close to the quarterback, the faker. So it's third down and ten. Texas crowd comes to life for its defense. They fake the draw, shovel pass to Bailey. Bailey got a block. Bailey got a first down. Nice play. Good looking play. Gary nice. Tranquil dialed up the perfect call there, and it's a first down Tar Heel. It's a nice looking play. A fake, fake draw, which holds everybody, and then you've got Bailey coming back and a little forward shovel pass. That's a critical uh, first down on a third and long backed up inside your own 15-yard line. On a third and 10, they got a dozen. Probably the last play of the quarter, if they get it off, from the 26-yard line. And they will not get off the play as Ronald's going to head to the sideline right now. He's going into the win. I turn around, they're going to get the win at their back. End of one. In Austin, pretty good football game. Texas dominating with their defense and their special teams. Their offense has been sputtering. They lead by seven. Royal Memorial Stadium in Austin, Texas. Six ranked Longhorns have sputtered offensively, but they lead 14 to seven courtesy of their special teams and their defense. Special teams almost scored on a punt return. Their defense did on an interception return. And now North Carolina's got their offense working. Ronald Curry, another first down run. Pickup of 12. And Curry has settled in. Some early problems. Wasn't very accurate. He started 0 for 3. And then that uh, that touchdown run seemed to have sparked him. Look at this. Uh, first, first quarter, time of possession, big. North Carolina, 23 plays. Texas, only nine. Not always how long you have it. It's what you do with it when you got it. Oh, there's a hit. Derek Johnson. And the sky's the limit for this true freshman linebacker, they say, number 11. They got nothing but praise for this kid. They say he's a future star, and they've got some uh, true freshmen on this squad that uh, have really played well. He's 6'4", 215, and he brings kind of a nasty demeanor to the plate. Well, nice they had hit. three outstanding wide receiver freshmen, true freshmen that played last year. They've got Cedric Benson, the top running back in the country on the squad. You'll see him today. Curry in trouble. Gets out of it somehow and slips down as he got across the 40-yard line. We check in at Times Square Stadium. Fresno State must be for real, huh? Yep. Camp Randall's not an easy place to play, though. A lot of football left there. Third down and eight. Here comes a blitz from the corner. Curry just lobs one up. Jump ball. And it's almost caught by Bosley Allen. At the last second, Allen made a play on the ball. Quentin Jammer got a hand in there. And Jammer's shaking up. That would have been a heck of a pass and a catch if he gets this one off against one of the best corners in the country. Throws it, just kind of short arms it, gets it up in the air with the wind. He could have caught that ball. Would have been a great catch. I think Quentin just got the wind knocked out in the way he landed, but. 
Chest first. Yeah. And you're watching uh, Quentin Jammers come off the field. That scrambling that Curry does, one of the toughest situations to put a cornerback in because you've got to stay with the receiver and you have no idea where the quarterback is scrambling to. If Jammers takes his eyes off the receiver to look back and see what's happening behind him, this receiver gets open. Yep. He was still with him the whole time, yet because Curry scrambles, he can make a play. Punning situation for John Lafferty. Not a great kick here, but that's not a good decision. Carolina's got it. Not very bright there. Madison Hedgecock got down there on the special teams, recovered Bashers. Muff punt. Basher, just a true sophomore. As good as he was earlier, I'm sure what he's trying to do is just stop that ball from from rolling further into the uh, into the minus territory. You just get away from it. Right here, you get away from it. So where once they prospered on the punt return, that one goes awry, and now Carolina's got great field position, red zone again at the 17-yard line. This has given some life to North Carolina. They needed to do something on special teams. They've got the ball inside the 20-yard line. Three wide out group. Andre Williams in the backfield. The big fella's got a head of steam inside the 10. Got about eight on a burst before D.D. Lewis could bring it down. 13 minutes left in the half, 14-7, Texas. Our Aflac trivia question for you this week. Name the four Division I-A coaches with at least nine wins in each of the last five years. Go to work thinking on that. We'll give you an answer a little bit later on. And timeout taken this time. With 12.45 remaining in the first half. 14 to 7. Texas in front, but North Carolina threatening again. So after the Texas timeout, it's North Carolina with a second down and a long two. At the Longhorns nine. Wonder if Texas is thinking quarterback draw here again. This time it's Williams on a handoff, and he'll score easily. Touchdown. Andre Williams has come in and lit up the ground game for the Heels. We're an extra point away from a tie game. And some of that spread offense that you're seeing more of now. Northwestern, I think, brought it in yep. mainly last year, where you hand the ball forward and the quarterback goes one way, the back goes the other way. Very tough to defense. And North Carolina has got some life. Boy, they got the attention of the Longhorn fans, I'll tell you that much. Jeff Reed in for the point after. Got it up and good. Surprise, surprise to many, I'm sure. Number six, Texas, tied by North Carolina right now. Watch him. He's going to hand the ball forward. Everything's at the wide receivers at the top of your screen. You got three. Everybody's going with the motion man, giving that all the attention. And then the, the fake or the hand to the court through the uh, running back forward and the quarterback taking off toward those receivers. That's just good play call. Their offense has looked so much better in this first quarter in a couple of minutes than it did against Maryland last week. Remember, it's turnover. One, and he's given one. <laughs> he helped get seven and give seven. That's Andre Williams, and he's fired up. He came in for Willie Parker. That whole sideline's fired up That's for that what matter. They need. they need some life. Carolina needs some leadership and some life on the sideline. So a 17 yard drive is all they needed after recovering the fumble and it took them only two plays 32 seconds tie game 14 Bender to kick and this one's going to sail out of the corner of the end zone touchback and the Longhorns will go to work from their own 20 yard line now we got a little scuffle and a late flag flying in not a lot of reason to mix it up on a kick that goes out of bounds but let's see the penalty
personal foul will go against North Carolina. So that's going to be better field position After the play was over, for Texas. A dead ball, personal foul. Our Aflac trivia question. The four coaches with nine or more victories in the last five seasons. Mac Brown's one of them. Otherwise, we wouldn't do it that way. Bobby Bowden, Bill Snyder, Steve Spurrier. Good group. There's always somebody in the game that's going to be on one of those answers. <laughs> <laughs> A little tip for that's down right. the road. <laughs> <laughs> At the 35-yard line, Chris Sims still looking for a completion. He's got it now down the middle, short gain. The Brock Edwards is tied in. Yeah, that's that's only Chris's 10th play of this game, whereas uh, Ronald Curry has 29 plays. Carolina's had six possessions. This is only the fourth. Six. First time they've Texas, excuse me. First time they've completed one to a tight end this year, too. Right down Main Street. And it's second down and six, a pickup of four. Carolina showing blitz. They'll come with it. Running right by it. Is Ivan Williams. First down, Longhorns out of the 48 yard line. Well, they're running to the right side behind Mike Williams, big number 63. And he'll clear you out. I guess. <laughs> he'll clear out a whole county. <laughs> He's got some big offensive linemen. This kid is 6'6, 345. Leonard Davis last year was the second. Offense, second player taken in the NFL draft, an offensive lineman. By uh, the Phoenix Cardinals. Zim straight drop on first down. Got a man open and got him. And it's Roy Williams. So it's Williams behind Williams, and now it's Sims to the other Williams. We'll try to keep those Williams straight for you. First down, Texas. Good throw. Now he's getting warmed up. So they got to stay out there a little bit to get something going. Here's the receiver just going to go down, run a slant inside. Five-step drop. Right on the money. Do it behind the second linebacker. Out at the 33-yard line. First down, Texas. Williams puts his head down, got to the 30, picked up about three. Ryan Sims, who's had a good game at defensive tackle for North Carolina, made the stop. And now. New wide receivers trot onto the field, including Kyle Shanahan. And the big round of applause was for Cedric Benson, number 32. This is a guy that Grease talked about a little bit earlier, most highly talented running back in the country. Just a pup, but he's a fast one. The coaches say he's special. He's going to be special. Here he comes. That time he ran right up his blockers back. The only, only problem, Brad, is that when this kid's in, he's a true freshman. He doesn't even know where the library is yet, let alone <laughs> the plays. Now, he knows the plays he carries the ball on or when you throw it to him, but he does not know when you give it to somebody else, you see him coming out of the game. When, when he doesn't know who to block. If it's a blitz, he doesn't know who to pick up, and that's not anybody's fault, but he's just young. Here's, here's the empty backfield right now. This is something quick here. They're not going to... And they pull one back. They brought Sloan Thomas back there, and they're just going to pitch it to him. The wide receiver on a sort of end around, but he's not going to get there. Nice job by the North Carolina defense. Billy D. Green with the safety came up to force the play, number 28. He won't get credit for the tackle, but he's the one that blew it up. Good point. Greenwood just avoided the block long enough to slow Thomas up so he could get around and get some help from a defensive guy coming inside out. Penalty marker down at the end of the play. It's going to be an illegal chop block on uh, Texas. It's going to be fourth down if they leave it alone, or it's going to back them up closer to the 35. I wouldn't give them another chance. Have an illegal block on the offense. 15 yards. Replay third down. Now they're going to give it to them, though. Uh, it'll back the line of scrimmage up, though, almost to the 40, I guess, with the 15-yard walk-off. Actually, outside the 40, out to the 41. Max got a problem now of... He was up 14 to nothing very easily. You know, and they're at home, they're playing 14. They're playing a team that's 0-2 that hasn't looked good. He's got a problem now with confidence in getting his guys back fired up. They they thought this may be a cakewalk, <laughs> and now they're in a dogfight. They sure are. Three wideouts, all good ones. 
On a third down at 18 for Chris Sims. Brett Robin is his setback, his third down specialist from the backfield. Chris is going long. Got a man out there. Tipped and knocked away. Intended for Roy Williams. Nice coverage by Waddell. The little guy giving up Sims some Sims. size, but he stayed with the big fellow Williams, and it's incomplete. You're right. The, the ball was right there. Chris puts it on the money. I'd throw it up to this guy. 6'5". Maybe could have had a little bit more to the outside, but still a good throw. Good opportunity for the catch. 6'5", 210 is Roy Williams. Brian Bradford comes in to punt. Bradford to catch. Sam Aiken is the return man back at about the 10-yard line. But Bradford would like to just knock this in the air and let his coverage unit down it inside the 10 somewhere. And that's about what's going to happen. Goes out of bounds inside the 7-yard line. Nice punt. Good game we got going. 14-14, Texas and North Carolina. Texas fans a little surprised, I think, by what they're seeing. Tie ball game. But North Carolina's in a tough spot. It's own seven-yard line. Williams maybe got two. Everick Rawls, one of the first there to meet him. This is an area of the field where offensively you got to be very careful. Your offensive line is not strong, and uh, I think what you have to do is to just be careful what you do and what you call. Don't drop the ball. Don't help Texas along. Georgia Tech, are they warming up for their matchup with Florida State or what? 42 to nothing in the first quarter? Hello. Oh, oh. Here's the toss. Williams broke a tackle. He's about two yards short of the first down. Rawls and Lewis are there to stop him. Nice run by Williams. Broke the tackle of uh, Redding. Andre Williams, you know, last week he carries the ball nine times. He ends up with only five yards. He's been their boss in this game, having scored a touchdown and 27 yards on nine carries. There's a big third down here for both teams. Third and two. Curry, option. Uh-oh, Williams fumble. Texas got it. You know, I feel bad for, for John Bunny. Oh, oh, wait a minute. North Carolina got it. You just, you just can't do this. I mean, you've got a, a, a fourth-year senior and a second-year guy. The ball is right in your hands. You just can't drop this ball. It's a good call. The, execu the execution is good. Just get on the football. I thought Texas had it there, but that Williams did well to save it. The only problem is his punter's not too happy about it. The coach is pulling his hair out of the sideline, what's got left. Remember, Texas... In their opener, locked up punt for a touchdown. And if they're ever going to turn the horns loose, it might be right here. Oh, for sure. Official sideline warning. This is the first sideline warning. I don't know whose sideline it went to. I guess Texas, the way the fans are booing. And I don't know why the warning, whether it was something that was said or uh, whether the players are out too far. Let's see if they come after the punter. Nope. Well, got a return. Got it away clean. So Basher's got a shot from the 49 and a lot of green in front of him already. Nathan Basher almost took it again. He set up a touchdown. He gave away a touchdown. He's back on the plus side. <laughs> and he set up another one. Texas takes over the ball on the 18-yard line. They're trying to set it up to the right side. See all the burnt orange over to the right? Well, Carolina knew that, too, so he just takes it back and says, hey, there aren't many powder blue over here on the left side. I'm going left. He starts to the right. And then it, he, good job. One, one poor decision on touching that other punt. He made some good returns. DJ Johnson and Roy Williams, the wide receivers for Sims. But it's a little counter to Benson, and he goes down for a loss. Joey Evans off the defensive line, along with Eric Davis there to make the hit. They got nice penetration on this play. Gre Greg Davis, offensive coordinator was telling us he was going to try and get him in there earlier today. But this defense, this has been a frustrating and a different 
time for the offense for Texas. They've gotten some help from their defense, which scored seven points, and from their special teams. And they continue to get help from their special team. They haven't been on the field much. I mean, this is a tough defense that they're going up against. Second down, 13, as Benson lost three. Sims, quick drop, throws, incomplete, intended for Roy Williams. Fans are looking for a flag, thinking that somebody had a hold of his jersey, but it's incomplete, and it is third down and long. And we got a bunch of pups with a lot of experience, with a lot of talent. W w Williams, only a second-year guy. And as you watch a replay, Williams is just spending too much time, and it's a young mistake, trying to get off that defensive back, Bob. What he has to do is shed him and always look for the ball. You just can't spend your time fighting that defensive back. Good point. Five wide outs this time. On third down at 13. Sims to throw. Across the middle he goes. Not even back to the line of scrimmage, or barely. B.J. Johnson made the catch, but there's a few boo birds out now. That's going to bring out the field goal unit. So I'm sure they're wondering, you know, why if it's third and ten or more, why throw way under that? But yep. that's not the design. The design was to throw downfield. Guys were covered, and that's your outlet, and you hope that he's going to make be able to catch the ball and run for the first down. Dusty Mangum, the true freshman, trying a 36-yard field goal. He hit a couple last week at 17 and 24, and he's got this one right down 6th Street. Texas back in front. Longhorn 17, Tar Heels 14. Back in Austin, Texas, our Pacific Life game summary so far. Ronald Curry started slow, warmed up. Still not passing that well, but he's leading the offense. And 17 points for Texas with only 55 yards of total offense. Nathan Basher, his two punt returns, both led to scores. A touchdown and a field goal. So Texas back in front, but it's not much of a lead with 5.48 to go first half. Brad Nessler, Bob Greasy, Lynn Swan along with you. There are Royal Memorial, Texas Memorial Stadium. Smith the kick. And a short kick at the 11. Kevin Knight. Knight squirts up the middle. I think we're going to have an illegal block on the return, though, and that'll back it up from what would have been good field position. Well, the wind's going big time from right to left, so that kickoff didn't go nearly as far as the ones going the other way. It's a holding call. So that's going to take it back closer to the 20-yard line. Mac Brown, nine win seasons every year he's been here. Last year, nine and three. They lost the Holiday Bowl to Oregon in a high-scoring shootout. But Mac's had 11 straight winning seasons and nine straight bowl games between these two programs that are both on the same field. He was the head coach at North Carolina. Took the job here. Carl Torbush took over at North Carolina. Didn't do as well as he had hoped, obviously. They made the change in Chapel Hill. And there's Max numbers at Texas. He has embraced the tradition and the pride of Texas football past. He and Coach Royal are pretty tight and frequent visitors, and he loves having him around the program. And smartest, thing he, smartest thing he ever did. You got that right. From the 20, Curry. Draw play to Willie Parker. Parker's got the corner. Thought he had the corner. Got about five. Nice tackle by Babers and Rawls as we go to Times Square Stadium and check in with John. Thanks, fellas. Talk to you in about five minutes. Curry in trouble. Broken tackle. And now he's going to take the slide at about the 21-yard line. We'll bring up third down and long. Slide was a good move. Uh -huh. he, didn't, he didn't make it. He could take any punishment. Dorn and Tubbs are the guys that brought the heat on him. And with 4.46 remaining in the first half, a surprising North Carolina team has done some things just well enough to stay with the number six team in the country. Texas looking for its 10th straight win at home. They've won 17 of their last 19 here under Mack Brown. But they got their hands full because they haven't been on the field that much in North Carolina half. Third down. And nine. Four wideouts for Curry. 
Wants to throw back the other way to his single receiver over there. Incomplete. Quentin Jammer's looking for an offensive interference. And he won't get that throw. Bosley Allen, the intended receiver. Well, Allen was going for the ball, but uh, Jammer had him jammed up against the <laughs> sideline, and there was no way. Jammer, probably the best corner coming out this year. He's not doing anything. If, if anything, <laughs> I think Allen's kind of jumped on his back. That's what he was loading for. for a little ways. Yep. <laughs> they just showed it on the replay screen here at the stadium. And he maybe had a case, but they leave that one alone, and Lafferty will punt. This time they got some pressure on him, and he got a high kick away. Fair catch taken by Basher back at the 38-yard line. Good kick under some pressure. Chris Sims having a few words with the coaches before he heads back out on the field. And Chris has had a rough day so far. Knocked down, had his passes knocked down. Pretty looking ball that was incomplete to Williams there. Everything he's completed has been short. And he's not putting up the big numbers that he put up last year. And last year, as Bob said earlier, pass efficiency wise, he was the at, leader in the Big 12. At the conference, Applewhite was third. But you know, I hate those packages. They pick all the bad Most plays. <laughs> There's Major Applewhite. <laughs> former player of the year offensively in this conference. There's a good throw. And a first down. Pick up of about 17 to B.J. Johnson. It hasn't been on the field that much. That's why it's been frustrating for Texas offensively. They haven't been needed. Can't get a rhythm. They can't get in a rhythm. Uh, now they come out and say, all right, let's just start throwing. Protection is there. First down, play action. Throws inside the linebackers. It, you just you don't get in a rhythm unless you're on the field. So much is made of Roy Williams. B.J. Johnson is pretty much his equal. He's just not as big as Chris's numbers on the day. First down at the Carolina 45. He'll drop the throw on first down again. Again, complete. This time it's Bo Scaife, his tight end. And you know Bo's feeling good about that. Check in with Lynn. Well, Brad, you and Bob pointed out the fact the wind's blowing pretty good and against the quarterback. So I watched Sims in pregame warm-up, and his passes aren't affected. I talked to Tim Bruce, to the tight end coach. He said that Bill worked with him so much that he has such rotation of the ball that this kind of wind has very little effect on his passes when he throws a hard pass. Bob? With big hands, too. That helps. What does he ever? <laughs> big hands with him. It goes all the way up to your elbow. <laughs> Here he's going to throw it out in the flat. Got a man wide open. First down. Victor Ike spins his way to the 32. Pick up a nine. And Texas has got it rolling here a little bit. Under three minutes in the half. They lead by three. So they're going to the pass on first down. Chris looks downfield. If the corner goes with the receiver, he comes off to the back in the flat. Now those last couple passes, what Swanley was talking about, those white stripes barely move. Those things are tight. Six completions now to five different receivers. Mixing it up pretty well. First down, Longhorns at the heels, 32. Sims again to throw. Maybe not. Now he'll tuck it. Get what he can. Loose ball. Carolina says they've got it, and they do. Chris Sims saying he was down before that ball popped out, but one of the officials has already signaled Tar Heel football. See, the, 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 the coaching point here and the thing that Chris has got to learn is just slide. You're not a running back. I think the ball comes out as soon as he got hit. And he, the ball came out. Dexter Reed and Quincy Monk are the guys that made the hit. They did the right thing in looking, looking, and now take off. That's too much time. Somebody's coming from behind. Take a look. Oh, well, it's out. No question. It's out on the way down. And the coaching point there and the thing that Chris will learn, this is only his eighth start. Everybody has these high expectations of this young man. Get down, slide. They always think he knows everything. He's got to go through this and learn this. And Jackson. he's got to learn to slide, Bob. But also, he was holding that ball like he wanted to throw it. When he decides to run, he's got to tuck that ball away and get a firmer grip on it. Dexter Reed was the guy that made the hit. Monk was the recovery. And here's Willie Parker on a toss. Parker hit by Jammer as he got to the 35. Pick up a 12, though. And teams mixing it up a little bit after the play again. 
said earlier before the game that I liked Bunning and I liked his attitude and I think he's going to do well at Carolina. He's a first alum since, uh, what, 56 with Jim Tatum. Yep. He's the tough guy. He's a defensive guy. He wants to get some toughness in this team. Earlier this week, he uh, had some scrimmages on Tuesday and Wednesday. They went back to work. And some they? guys got hurt. But at the same time, I think they're playing much better because they're finally getting the bunning way. Here's Parker inside. They open a nice hole for him to get six more yards. ABC Sports presentation of college football brought to you by Jeep Liberty. The next great Jeep idea. Jeep, there's only one. Original Coors, nothing beats an original. And Aflac, without it, no insurance is complete. The UT Tower here in Austin on the campus of the University of Texas. They lead by three, but North Carolina's got the ball back, and Willie Parker's got a first down. And North Carolina's got some time to work. They do have only one timeout remaining. Remember, they used two early in the first quarter. But they could get it down. They got a pretty good kicker. They could maybe try to tie this thing up before halftime. But no matter what, I think they're in very good shape. I think they're very happy to be in the situation that they're in right now. Borders and Aiken, the wide receivers, and Curry on play action wants to put it up. Got a block, scrambles, finally fires, had a man open in the middle, and he threw it behind him. His tight end, Doug Brown, momentarily was open, but Curry couldn't get enough on that pass going the wrong way. They only had three receivers out. Both of the wide receivers were going straight down the field. The tight end was hanging around the middle. And once the defensive end got in there and flushed him, he didn't have a chance to get it anywhere. That'll bring up a second down at 10. The clock stop with a minute eight remaining in the half. Second and 10 from the 49. Isaiah Robinson has come in as an extra wide receiver. He and Aiken and Borders all to the right side. Here they come. Curry, got to get rid of it. Oh, he ducked under the rush. Finally got rid of it. And it's almost caught. I mean, that move right there shows you why, coming out of high school, people compared Michael Vick and Ronald Curry. And that was an expectation. He had Allen Iverson compared to him in basketball, Michael Vick in football. Just watch this move. He's dead right here. Nope, not quite. Nope. <laughs> now, he can do all of that. The thing that he needs to do is make good decisions, and that's what John Bunning is complaining about right there. The yep. ball's in the air, and he got hit. You can't do that. That was Isaiah Robinson, the third receiver, and he took one right in the kisser. The problem was he wasn't throwing to him. He was throwing it about 20 feet over his head to the receiver downfield further. Four receivers now. Here comes a corner blitz. Curry runs the other way. Finally throws. Incomplete again. He's buying himself all kinds of time. The thing that's not happening, he's not connecting with anybody when he does it. And he's not getting a lot of help. The receivers downfield have to separate from the defensive backs that are standing next to him. It is fourth down. So they waste an opportunity there. They had pretty good field position. And now they've got a fourth down. The Valvoline halftime show with John and Terry is uh, less than a minute away. Uh, all the scores and highlights from the other games around the country. The Wisconsin Fresno State's got a good game going. Another high kick. Basher, who's been two out of three times great on punt returns, and now they got too close to him. And there's going to be a penalty for not giving him enough room with a halo, and that's Macklin, who got too close to that six foot area. 35 yard kick. So that'll move the ball outside the 20. <clears throat> Non-contact. Kick to the first. On the kicking team. Five yards from the violation. First down. At the 21-yard line. First down. These are ACC officials, are they not? Carolina brings them with them. That's the way it, these interconference games, that's the way they normally do it. The visiting team brings their conference officials. Not replacement guys. <laughs> Texas has to go back to North Carolina next year. They can take their Big 12 officials. That's and, right. And Mac Brown says that that's going to be tough to go back to Chapel Hill and all of his friends and play there. Five receivers for Chris Sims. In their hurry up. Down the middle. Good throw. Johnson's got a first down at the 37. D.J. Johnson 
They still having a hard time getting it to Roy Williams, but he's finding B.J. Johnson. A 17-yard game. Williams has one catch for 10 yards. When you spread out like this, five receivers empty in the backfield. A lot of quick passing. Short drop. Quick nice. out. A quick out. Nice stiff arm. A quick six more yards to Montrell Flowers, who actually, with all the double coverage that's being drawn by Johnson and Williams, this guy's been able to flourish. He had a couple of touchdown catches last week. Yes, he did. The big five offensive linemen can handle four defensive linemen. When you go empty in the backfield because there's nobody up the block. When they bring up some linebackers and some DBs up there, that's when it gets tough. There's nobody up here to help rush the passer. So you feel safe with your five against their four. Wide receiver screen to Williams. Broke two tackles. That's all he could do, though. He might have a first down. Dexter Reed stayed with him, knocked him out of bounds. You see big Mike Williams, the right tackle, heading out there to get a block? If that's a cornerback out there, you're scared to death. <laughs> <laughs> that guy is a man. It was a wide receiver screen. The right tackle just took off out there. Williams, all 6'6 and 345 pounds, and he can run. The reason, the reason they like him is he's got good feet. If offensive linemen are that big and have good feet, they can play. He's one of the captains today, as is his guard mate on that side, Antoine Kirk Hughes, two of the offensive captains, and that's about... 650 pounds of captainism on that side of the line. And that's a first down. So they move the sticks uh, all the way back to the far side again, and we'll line Texas up with 20 seconds remaining in the half. Leading by three. They've got both their timeouts left. So the 48-yard line with a first down. They've got time for about three plays here. Well, they, they, they've got some explosive receivers that can get downfield. Sims in trouble. Dumped it over the middle and got rid of it. Incomplete. Again, Ryan Sims was the guy bringing the pressure again. Yeah, Carolina defensive line doing a nice job. Peppers, Sims, Evans, three of those four guys in there putting some pressure on Sims. They're good players. Capable of being maybe really good players. Well, this is this is ideal for uh, Evans and Peppers. Yep. I mean, we're, we're in a passing situation. Just go out there and rush the passer. Don't worry about the run. There's no max protection when you got a five receiver group. Chris is all by himself again with five wideouts. Trying to roll away from the heat. On the run, he throws a strike. First down at the 33-yard line. That one to Sloan Thomas. Pick up of 19. It's a good thing, good thing he rolled that way because he had some trouble coming from the backside. Thomas, number nine, one of those two sophomores, the three wide receiver freshmen that came in last year. They caught a lot of balls. Let's throw by Sims. Now they've got nine seconds left to work, and they're at the 33-yard line. You try to go short, call one of your timeouts and kick a field goal, or you hit the end zone here. Well, I think you can, you can do either one. You can pick up the 10 yards and, and call a timeout, or you can take one, one shot into the end zone. They're going to throw a quick slant, almost intercepted. The intended receiver was Tony Jeffrey. And that could have been a disaster and a wasted opportunity to score. Now there's six seconds left. Jeff reacted like he didn't know what was going on. Yeah. He was supposed to run a slant. He kind of went down and did a stop, did a hitch. We're fortunate there. Very. You know, sometimes, you know, the defensive backs always read the route of the receiver and then react from it. He wasn't expecting the ball to be thrown that far inside because the receiver wasn't there. Right now, with six seconds left, it would be a 50-yard field goal. And into the wind, they don't have that kind of leg from Dusty Mangum. So you know they're going to try at least one more play or a quick out. Mangum's out there kind of trying to be part of the huddle. And John Bunning's saying, let's just hold them where they are, boys, and we'll go to the locker room down three, and we'll regroup and be happy with that. Well, what you've got to do is you, 
You only got time for one play, and it's got to go in the end zone. Unless you try to hit a, one of these receivers crossing the field and hope that he's going to run in. They've done a good job to get to this point. They took this ball over at their own 21-yard line with only 45 seconds to go, and now they're coming up to the seventh play of the drive with the chance. And that's all you want, I guess, is a chance. Look at that smile. He can work a room and a field. Nice kid. He sure is. Here we go. Six seconds left in the half. This time they keep it back in, and Brett Robin. Otherwise, four wide receivers for Chris Sims on what we think will be the last play of the second quarter. Going to throw quick, though. Get what he can, get out of bounds. Wasn't much. Got it to the 31. Still going to be about a 48-yard kick with two seconds left if that's what they choose to do. Sloan Thomas, the guy that made the catch. See, we don't we don't know what the place kickers to Mangum's telling uh, Mac Brown down there. He may have told him, I can make him from make it from this distance or that distance. And Mac said, well, just get a little bit closer. They didn't get it as I think they wanted about five or six out of that. Yep. They didn't get much. He's an invited walk-on. He'll be invited for the rest of his life. He hits his field goal before the half. Going to try a 49-yard kick. Dusty Mangum, good name for a kicker in Texas. A good kick for a kicker in Texas. He got it. How about that? There you go. That's how you become a 19-year-old hero in a hurry. I guess he knows it pretty good. All he needed was that little quick out on the left side because he just barely made it. By that much. Yes, sir. They add three more. The coach says, I'm going to let this kid try this another time somewhere down the line. 20 to 14 as Swanee's with John Bunning. Swanee. Coach, one of the messages you tried to give your team after the last two games you played was to be tough in the second half. How much will you reinforce that in this ball game? We'll talk about it at halftime. These kids are playing their hearts out. That's the kind of kids they have here at Carolina. And I love them to death. We're going to come out and play the second half just like we did first. We're going to play hard. All right, Coach. Thank, thank you. All right, fellas. Halftime in Texas. Six-ranked Longhorns lead 20 to 14 as we head to John Saunders and Terry Bowden at Times Square State. Brad Nessler, Bob Greasy, Lynn Swan, and our ABC crew in Austin, Texas. Statistically, here's how it looked in the first half. Well, Texas had a lot of re re yardage on returns. They only have 139 total, but they got a lot of other yardage. Punt returns and kickoff returns, interception, interception return returns. for a yeah. touchdown. Mm -hmm. Look at the bottom. The starting field position. Average starting field position. Carol Carolina's backed up. Texas is on the other side of the 50. Swanee, I think you talked to Mac, didn't you, coming out of the locker room? Yeah, I talked to Mac Brown, and he said, you know, what we've got to do is stop them on the run, stop Carolina. He's quoted the numbers. He said, they've run the ball, had the ball 41 times versus our 29. He says, we've got to get our offense on the field and make some plays. And on offense, we have to stop turning the ball over, stop penalizing ourselves. Then we can make some things happen. We had a great second quarter. We have to pick it up in the second half. We'll see how it goes as the kick is deep. Non-returnable. Touchback. And Texas won't have that 48-yard line to work from, which was their average starting field position. They'll work from their own 20. Bebo's up at least. He's awake now. He knows he's in a fight. It was too easy there at the beginning of the ball game with a 14 to nothing lead, and yep. he was lying down. Now he's on his feet. Yep. <laughs> Maybe he just had a little uh, a bite to eat at halftime, and he needs to stand up and do a little exercise. Yeah, we all did. <laughs> Here's Chris Sims at the controls. D.J. Johnson in motion toward the ball. Boy, there's some head banging going on right there. That was a collision, and it was Sims. Ryan Sims again, along with Persita Perry, and Victor Ike's going to have to rearrange his headgear. John Tenuta, the defensive coordinator, has got these guys fired up. They need to set the tone because the strength of this team is on the defensive side. First series of the second half really sets the tone for the second half. And, and, and that first play was all Carolina. Like you said, John Bunning's a tough guy, and now they're starting to play tough. Second and ten. Sims. Hit as he throws. Ryan Sims was the guy that got to him again. 
Those Sims collisions are getting too frequent right now for the Longhorns. The Sims comes up the middle, working on Holloway, 61, the left guard, and just beats him. They've got three guys in that defensive line that can rush the passer. It's Sims, Evans, and Peppers. And right now, they're winning the battle. Chris checking his elbow, and Ryan, the other Sims, getting in the stance again on a third and ten. Empty backfield again for the Horns. Quick drop. Oh. Roy Williams didn't quite turn his head in time. Well, he didn't get around the jam. Took too long to get off of the jam. Thornton, number 30, was jamming him, and uh, Chris had to throw it to the inside. He had time this time. You see him coming around Thornton, and he threw it inside of the linebacker. The young uh, receiver just didn't beat it quickly enough. Texas 0 for 5 on their third downs. They'll have to punt again. Ryan Bradford, Carolina should get good field position out of this. Not a good punt. Aiken can only let it bounce, though. It does take a bit of a Texas roll down to the 41-yard line. So to start the third quarter in the first minute, good defense by North Carolina and good field position for the Tar Heel offense. Got a penalty marker down back at the line of scrimmage. See if somebody took off early. No, I think they were they were pushing and shoving right back in front of uh, Ron Cherry, the the referee. Over. We have two fouls on the field. We have two fouls. Dead ball, personal foul on the kicking team. Dead ball, personal foul on the receiving team. Those penalties are going to offset. First down. All right. So no change, but now we have a chance to look at our Morgan Stanley. Well-connected storyline. 103 total yards of offense and a touchdown run for Ronald Curry. And their time of possession, they've had it almost five and a half, six minutes longer than uh, Texas has. Curry had a good first half. We came in talking about Ronald Curry and Darian Dur Durant. Maybe, you know, he's been playing every game. He hasn't gotten in yet. Okay. Curry's done a nice job. Good field position for the Tar Heels from the 41. Curry. Play action roll and throw it long. And it's intercepted. Quentin Jammer. That's why he's one of the best corners in college football, as Bob said earlier. And that's why they don't go after him very often. They've tried to get the ball to Allen. First play, second half. They talked about this at halftime with the win. Look at this. Jammer says, that ball's in the air. It is mine. I don't see this very often anymore, <laughs> and I want it. And he got it. His sixth career interception. Great catch. Just wait, Quentin. Next year, they'll be throwing a lot at you. <laughs> yeah, as a rookie in the NFL. Yeah, uh -huh. Good catch. But you know what? No harm. Because they backed him up, it's like another, it's like a punt. You lose the possession, and good field position, but Texas is backed up inside the tent. Offsides, it appeared, on uh, North Carolina. Dante Coates, uh, I think, is the guy that uh, jumped in there too quickly. And it is offside. That's the fourth time, I think, the defensive line of North Carolina has been offside. Prior to the snap, offside. Defense, contact, five yards, still first down. You know, Brad, I'd rather have my defensive line jumpy than my offensive line <laughs> uh, being moving and stopping the offense from moving. If that defense is, is, is jumpy, I know they're they're anxious and they're getting off the ball. But the offense shouldn't, there shouldn't be fouls in the offensive line. Okay, I'll put them up, I'll put up with them in my defensive line. At least it's aggressive. Here's Texas on the ground with Victor Ike. Haven't gotten much on the ground today. He picked up three. And it's still going to be a second down situation. A couple to go. 13-40 remaining in the third quarter. Six-ranked Longhorns looking for their 10th straight victory and finding it a lot tougher. Yeah. Maybe, the, maybe not that they thought it was going to be easy, but I think the rest of the country thought it would be more simple. Yeah, they're in a dogfight. Yeah, they are. Second down and one. Of 
try to get it on the left side. I don't know. Penalty markers down. Hike on the carry. Might have a holding call mixed into the stew. We'll see. It is holding Texas. That negates what may or may not have been a first down run, but it's going to back them up. And all that field position we were talking about at halftime in the first two minutes is going the other way. Holding on the offense. Ten yards from the previous spot. We'll replay the down. So all the way back to the 13. Chris Sims is looking at us and said, let's hustle with the call. Cedric Benson has checked back into the backfield for Texas, a highly touted freshman in a second down and 11 situation. Both wideouts in tight on the right side. Here's the toss to Benson. Looking for a block. Actually overran his blocker, Mike Williams. Waddell and Monk made the tackle. There's the there's the veteran talking to the, the and he's saying he's got to follow me. You can't run by me. He's you got to follow me. Just stay on my hip, son. Just stay on my <laughs> hip. The senior talking to the freshman. So just go where I go. I'll, I'll lead you. I'll take you to the promised land. <laughs> <laughs> and when you're that big, you tend to listen. <laughs> They're down at nine. Four wide out, five wide out group for Chris Sims. It's collapsing again. He buys himself some time. Got it to Johnson. First down. C.J. Johnson. Nice job by the quarterback. Moving around to give your receivers a little more time. Zone coverage. Initially, defensively, everything was covered. And then he moves around. Give him some time to slide and get open. He throws well on the run, doesn't yeah, he? Yes, he does. Now, what the receivers did, Bob, you were talking about not scrambling and coming back for Curry. He had one receiver coming back to the quarterback, another receiver going deep, and Sims found the man coming back to him. That's what they have to do. Got him a first down, and now here's Benson. And the freshman's going down in the heat at the line of scrimmage. Quincy Monk, the defensive captain. The middle linebacker made the hit. Benson just simply idolizes everything that Ricky Williams ever has done and still does as a running back, and he's even got that... Uh, Shield on his face mask, a la Ricky. And some of his teammates call him Ricky minus two. Yeah, well, they're leaving him in, so that means he's going to carry it again. Yep. Because he doesn't know what to do if they don't give him the ball or they send him out on the pass route. Chris is getting everything squared away. Trying to direct traffic on a second and ten. Here's Benson right here. Send him out. Well, down goes Sims. Isaac Mooring this time. Backup defensive end. Got him. From the other side, it seems like Texas is fooling around with all these little gimmicks trying to get the ball to Benson. He took too long to get out there. Chris was ready to throw it. Benson wasn't looking, and then the sack got there. And that's with Julius Peppers and all those guys out of there. Third down and 18 now. Now we see this spread left to right. Plenty of time, Sims. Hung out his wide receiver who got peppered at the sideline and now flags are down as Montreal Flowers is still down. And this might be Dexter Reed who made the hit being a little too proud of it. So Montrell Flowers, who had two touchdown catches last week, shaking up. On the white, 15 yards. The down is going to be fourth down. It was not the hit. It was the celebratory uh, antics afterwards about making a hit that big. And it's 
It's not a first down because it was third down and like 16. Third and 18. 18. Yep. So it's still, still third down. It'll be fourth down. Here's the penalty now. Looking to the Texas bench yeah. and being pretty happy with himself, Dexter Reed. And a good clean hit, a good clean hit, but and it's fourth, probably didn't need that. They don't get the down over because it was after the play, a dead ball foul. So it's fourth down and short. And Bradford will come in to kick. Michael Waddell is going back as a punt return man. And he knows what to do with it if he gets some room. Already has an 89-yard punt return for a touchdown against Oklahoma in the season opener. They'll try to keep it away from him. Or we'll make him call fair catch. In this case, they keep it away from him. Down that about the 38-yard line. A little over 10 minutes to go, third quarter. Nothing's changed. Still, Texas holding a six-point lead. It's over 100 degrees. On the Longhorn side, they've got a little mist to keep the team cool. But on the North Carolina, they're just gutting it out with nothing, guys. I don't know how Swanee stays so dry. Never let him see you sweat, huh? He's cool. Yeah. Curry flips it out, but going to a knee to make the catch was Borders. And that'll deaden that play right there. Carolina has had 43 plays, only five of which have been run in the Texas side of the, of the field. Here's Darian Durant, who we thought we would see today, but Ronald Curry has played well enough to keep number 11 on the sideline. Yeah, Curry is uh, 5 of 16 for 70 yards, and he's rushed for another 31 and a touchdown. He'll work out of the gun here. Second down at 12. Draw play. Got back across the original line of scrimmage. Andre Williams, the ball carrier, and Thornton made the tackle. And it'll bring up third down and long. Corey Bailey and Bosley Allen, the two main receivers for North Carolina, have been quiet today. There's Aiken. He's way out to the left side. Curry again from the stretch. With some trouble. Trying to run out of it. And Collard at the line of scrimmage. Texas saying the ball came loose. The officials are not agreeing right now. Maurice Gordon made the tackle. And it's going to be fourth down and nine. Texas three and out defensively is just what they wanted. That's it's not an ideal situation for Carolina offensively. They're not they're not good when they have to throw the ball on third and long. So Lafferty will have to punt again. Nathan Bash has given us most of our thrills today on the other end of these punts. Positive thrills and negative thrills. And he takes this one at the five and slips down. As he crossed the 10-yard line. 56-yard punt. Great kick. Texas has the ball back. Deep in their own territory. And they lead by six. Defensive tackle who would have been a starter for Texas on their defensive front. His family was here. Coach Mac Brown. There's his mom, Judy. His dad, Mark. Who's still very much a part of this team. They were given a number 44 jersey. And also a Texas ring. And no one will wear that jersey anymore until his class would have graduated. Brandon Cole Pittman, who died in a one-car crash in late February, right before the start of spring practice. You see the CP decals that are on the kids' helmets. And uh, the Pittman family is still very much a part of this Texas program. Here's a pass out to Roy Williams. As Cole, they said, would call his dad every night. And now... One of his teammates does every night. Here's his locker, Cole's locker, which will stay exactly as is for the next couple of years. He would have been a starter on the defensive front. Heck of a ball player. Tragic accident that took him, obviously, way too early. And uh, he's fought the good fight and watching the game, I'm sure, from a better place. It was quite a ceremony. It really was. Second down a yard. And that's a first down run. I like, I like the fact that the kids sign up 
that Cole would always call. Yeah. You know, whenever the time was each week that is, he'd call home and talk to his dad. The co kids have signed up and they call when Cole would be calling. A four yard gain, first down. His brother Chase also, of course, was here today. He's a big fella, too. And it was tough on Mac Brown. Mac said, you know, it's made me a better coach and a better person because we had to go through it, but it's not something you want to do to try to better yourself, that's for sure. Second down. First down, rather, at the 24. And now there's running room. Uh, Ivan Williams, big fella. Rumbles his way. The ball comes loose at the end of the play, but he's down at the 46-yard line. 31-yard run. Well, they finally got out of the shadow of their own goalpost. Three possessions in the second half, all starting back inside the 20-yard line. But this, a nice draw play, good blocking up front, and a missed tackle. That You don't want to tackle him that high. Uh -uh. He's too big. The <laughs> ball comes out when he hits the ground. He's 235 and all of that. Yeah. Longest play for Texas today, right there. Longest play from scrimmage. Mm -hmm. We've had some punt returns. Right. Yeah. Three wide receiver group now. Sims looks like he's changing things up at the line. Carolina thinking about a corner blitz, and they've got to back out of that now. Got to hurry on the play. They got the snap off. And Williams again, this time about three. David Thornton made the tackle from his linebacker position. Swanick. Montreal Flowers, number two, the receiver for Texas that took that shot on the last possession, was walked into the locker room. He's got some bruised ribs. As far as they know at this moment, they're going to check him out, and his return is questionable for the rest of this ball game, Brett. Okay, he took a wicked shot on that incomplete pass. Got him right under the front of his shoulder pads. And so they lose one of their receivers. The good news is they have so many others. The second and seven. This time, North Carolina there to meet everything head on. Thornton and Monk made the stop. It'll be a third down after we check in with John in New York. Or what? They're at least still fitting into the slipper for now. Third down along six. Empty backfield. Sims quick drop. Slant and complete to Williams, but I don't think he got the first down. I don't know. It's going to be close. Wait a minute. The linesman now from this side gave him a good spot. I didn't think his foot ever got across the line, but apparently it did. And that'll be good enough for a first down if they spot it where they're going to put it down. Roy's got bigger feet than I think he does, I guess. <laughs> All you know is how big his hands oh, are, right? Oh, man. <laughs> Protection, five wide, nobody in the backfield. A lot of quick passing, slants mostly, some fades. Throw it quick. First down, Longhorn, Cedric Benson back at the tailback spot. Sims wide open in the flat, his tight end. Brock Edwards, and Edwards gets about seven more. Under four and a half minutes here in the third quarter. Reminder that at the conclusion of today's game, We'll select a Chevrolet player of the game. Chevrolet will make a $1,000 contribution to each university's general scholarship fund. With Bob Greasy and Lynn Swan, I'm Brad Nessler. A little over four minutes to go in the third quarter. Eighth play of the Texas drive. And they have a second down and a long two. Getting down close to North Carolina's Here they come. goal line. They're going to bring everybody up. And they snapped the ball, and Chris took a knee, and that should be a free five-yard first down. They hit him off sides, right up the gut. And again, the, the, the quarterback can influence the guys right in front of the ball, right in front of the center the most, because they hear the inflection of the snap count. It's been a day-long problem for North Carolina. As Bob said, you want your defensive lineman to be aggressive, but here's the call. Well, off sides. It's a live ball foul. We're going to have five yards. It's going to be an automatic first down. Yes, it is, Ron. First down. These linebackers right in here, getting a little antsy. Guy jumps on the other side, then he jumps. Who's that, Reed? Good move Wonderful. by the good move by the center too, Matthew Anderson. He and Sims. Yeah. And yeah, pretty good thing going there. Little tap, get it to me. I'll take a knee. We'll get a free first down, and it is at the 23 yard line. Let's 
Sim sides the pressure and Benson, the heralded freshman, dropped it. <laughs> He'll get another chance. But Benson is in there. They're either going to hand him the ball or throw it to him. He's not sure. He sees drifting. He doesn't know what he's doing. Chris was looking downfield to throw the ball downfield initially. And he came off to Benson as a little outlet. Second down and 10. They started this drive at their own 11 yard line. DJ Johnson's been Chris Sims' favorite target today. This is Benson on a draw. Benson hit at the 15. Just when it looked like he might squirt out of there, Thornton stopped it. If Benson's in the game, he's either getting it or they're throwing it to him. And he was left in there. Split backs. You got to think draw right here. Show pass, dump it off. How about David Thornton, though? Here's a guy who didn't even have a scholarship till recently. Had 24 career tackles before this year. He's their leading tackler, not only coming in, he's their leading tackler today as well. 15 tackles against Oklahoma in their first ball game. Third down and three. Sims, quick toss, got it up. First and goal. And it's B.J. Johnson, as I said, he's his favorite guy today. B.J. is the guy they do this with, the quick screens behind the line of scrimmage because of his running ability. Very athletic. Last year caught 41 passes as a true freshman. Caught. Three three of them were touchdowns. Yep, caught five today already, and three of those have come on third down. First and goal. Shanahan is the motion man. On the ground, Benson, touchdown! <laughs> Looked like the parting of the Red Sea. And Benson, once he got the handoff, was gone faster than a tax rebate check. Touchdown, Texas. <laughs> Following that big right side, Kirk Hughes and Mike Williams. Nobody touched him. First touchdown of his Longhorn career. Texas is going to go for two. <laughs> and you see the Stevens, the fullback, telling him where to line up, telling him to get off the field. And Texas is going to have to take a timeout to try this two-point conversion because they uh, were a little bit confused and took too much time. Well, they had too many players on the field. So we've got a timeout. We'll take it right here with two minutes, 25 seconds to go, third quarter. The Longhorns, after the timeout, now set for the two-point conversion attempt. Johnson and Williams, the wide receivers. Brett Robin in there in the backfield. Chris Sims. To Brett Robin, he made a great one-handed catch, but he's short of the end zone. Short of the goal line, and the two-point conversion fails. And a man open in the back of the end zone that he didn't see. Chris come back, going to throw to his. Never saw the man deep in the end zone. What a catch. Yeah, <laughs> good catch. They haven't forgotten to let Chris know they're in the uh, backfield yeah. any, any time today, have they? Well, he knows they're there. Yep, that was Dante Coach that time. So it stays a 12-point game with 225 left in the third quarter. John Bonning's team is hanging tough despite an 0-2 record, but they just saw Texas put together their best march of the day, 89 yards in 12 plays. How about a tough schedule to open with? The oh. first, your first five games, you're playing Oklahoma, Texas, and the FSU. All three of them ranked in the top six in the country. John says, that's what's going to make my kids tough, though. They'll get better learning one way or another. There we go. We got ABC on somebody's stomach. 
<laughs> That's a good look. Knight and Bailey are back deep as Dan Smith, former junior college player, walked on here a week ago Wednesday, started kicking footballs, and now he's wearing burnt orange. Short kick this time at the 10. Knight bobbled it, down he goes. Nice coverage by the special teams after that bobble. They got down there in a hurry, especially the outside man as Knight had to bobble it a little bit. Yeah, the special teams for Texas continue to do a nice job, and North Carolina, not so good. Michael Under is the guy that made the stop. Sometimes when you bobble it like that, the guys tend to run right by you, and you find yourself a little crease, but Under had different ideas. Sometimes the coverage team relaxes when they see you bobble it. Not that time. North Carolina. Whoa, what a hit from the corner. And who else? The guy we've been talking about all day, Quentin Jammer. Senior out of Angleton, Texas. And he had the right angle right here. Well, it's going to be a toss this way, but here's Jammer. He gets right into the middle of it. Right there. Couldn't have a better play called defensively for a toss to the wide side. Now the fans getting into it. Curry almost had it intercepted by Pearson. This is this is not a good throw. You gotta you gotta move your feet. If, if, if there's somebody there, you gotta be ready to improvise and throw around the guy. Sometimes Ronald Curry doesn't he doesn't he's not active enough. You know. That quickness that we showed on the basketball court, I don't see that quickness in the pocket. That's good ball. Moving his feet unexpectedly. Be ready to have to move around. I don't he's, see that. He's only hit one of his last eight. Here comes the pressure again. Over the head of his intended receiver. And Pearson's the guy that brought the heat. Curry still getting up. Longhorn's defense does its job. And for maybe the first time today, they've got the crowd in it. One thirty left in the third. And again, it's going to be Lafferty having to punt from deep in his own end zone. Not a good spot. We talked about Texas getting a block punt last week. Looks like they have the return on. And a high snap. Uh-oh. Nathan Basher. Second time he's bottled one today, but now he's found a handle. And he got it back to the 37-yard line. He was trying to get back over to the left side. He had a wall set up over there. If he could have gotten over there, it was lights out. Tried to catch this one in his hands up high, just misplayed well, it. I think like with it. the wind, it kind of sailed yep. on him and took off. He's trying to get over there to the left. If he can get over there. <laughs> they wouldn't let him. No way. Cedric Benson remains in the Longhorns' backfield as they'll work first down now from the 37. They fake it to him. It's an end around. Roy Williams. Williams trying to outrun and does the competition inside the 40-yard line. 25 yard end around for Big Roy. Well, the uh, Carolina defense has got their eye on Benson also. He gets at it. There's only one guy left, Waddell, to slow him up. He slows him up just enough. Well, that was um, that was Hood on that side. There, uh, Errol Hood. And then um, Waddell comes over and knocks him out. But it's a first down at the 38 as the sun shines over the stadium in Austin. Sims trying to dive back to the line of scrimmage. It was Ryan Sims again that forced him and flushed him out of the pocket. 
ABC Sports presentation of college football brought to you by the Olive Garden. When you're here, you're family. Cadillac, the fusion of design and technology. And Pacific Life, annuities, insurance, investments, discover the power of Pacific Life. Final minute of the third quarter in Austin, Texas. Sixth-ranked Longhorns leading 26 to 14. Draw play. And Victor Ike squirms his way down to about the 35-yard line. David Thornton made the tackle. That might be the last play of quarter number three. Longhorns continue to rotate their backs. Ike started. Williams played considerably. And uh, Cedric Benson scored a touchdown the last time they had it. So the Longhorns are going to come to the sideline, put up the hook'em sign for the fourth quarter. And we played three in Austin. Number six, Texas, 26. The Tar Heels of North Carolina, 14. ABC Sports presentation of college football will continue after this message and a word from our ABC stations. Darrell K. Royal, Texas Memorial Stadium as we start the fourth quarter with the Longhorns leading by 12 and a third and seven at the North Carolina 35-yard line. Empty backfield again. Chris Sims directing traffic, changing things up at the line. In a hurry. Almost dialed up the right play. B.J. Johnson stretched out, couldn't get it. He's going to the right place. That's the, that's the place you want to get to, the center of the field. The receivers over there just can't get around that linebacker and get into the middle of the field. Now this would be a 52-yard field goal try with a wind at Dusty Mangum's back. At the beginning of the game, I would have told you this is going to be a pooch punt. But after seeing a 49-yarder into the wind to end the half, I'm not so sure they won't let him kick this thing. Yeah. Officially, they'll say it's a 51-yard attempt. They're going to give it a shot. He got it. How many more of those does he have to kick to get a scholarship? <laughs> <laughs> At least he was an invited walk-on. Yes, a recruited walk-on, they call him. Came in in August, and here in September is hit two long field goals. This one's 51, and it's got plenty. Texas had 17 starters on offense and defense coming back, but they lost their two kickers. Chris Stockton was an all-Big 12 place kicker, so this is the kid that's trying to take those shoes and fill them, and he's doing it pretty good right now. I just love that name for a kicker in Texas, Dusty. <laughs> that just sounds right. Yeah. I think you like everything about Texas, partner. <laughs> the third quarter Texas had the ball almost 11 and a half minutes compared to Carolina having it a little over three and a half that was the exact opposite of that first quarter right always thinking always working writing a note that he has to talk to the team about later on Building the program up. Here's what Bob was talking about. They had the ball over 40 minutes in their season opening victory over New Mexico State. And they just had a big quarter that was all there. Smith's kick over here to the near side to Kevin Knight, a yard in. Knight popped at the 10. They're going to wrap him up. Trahan is the first guy down there. Number 18 is the third string quarterback, but he kind of likes to hit people. That's the way those quarterbacks are. <laughs> They're all that way. Yeah. What, what surprise is that to you? <laughs> Look at that right hit. There. <laughs> he gets a piece and gets up and gets some more. He's one of their leading special teams tacklers. I wouldn't be surprised to see Durant come in pretty soon. Still Curry for now. Curry running for his life. Safety. Maurice Gordon with a safety. And it's 31-14. 
got to block him aside from the fullback. Boom. He's right there. I mean, got no chance. I don't care who the quarterback is. You got no chance on that one. If you're backed up, one of those offensive linemen have got to hit him. There comes Gordon. Oh, Bang. Gee, that gives me a headache. Yep. My back's going to hurt for a week. <laughs> and that shows you what good kick coverage can do as well. Keep in mind, Trahan and his teammates making that hit on the five is what set up shop for Gordon. 31-14 with a free kick coming. And boy, this group in Austin has gotten loud now. There's the young offensive line that we were talking about. We talked about them. They're new. There's um, four new one starters in the offensive line, and that's that's one of the areas that they've never had good offensive linemen at Carolina. Good defensive linemen. A lot of them have gone on to the NFL, but not many offensive linemen gone through Carolina. So now it's Lafferty with a free kick coming up. And he'll punt it from the 20. This should be great field position. A tandem of return men back led by Vasher, who's given us some exciting moments today. Number three back for the Longhorns. They're going to kick it away from him. It'll go to Victor Ike at the 27. And Victor found a little opening, and the running back runs into North Carolina territory at the 49-yard line. 14-23 to play. Texas with a 17-point lead. A familiar name to NFL fans, Shanahan. That's Kyle, and that's Mike's son, and it's the Broncos and the Giants on Monday Night Football, regular season premiere. NFC champion Giants. Jesse Armstead and company, they'll be chasing somebody named Greasy. Brian Greasy, the top-rated passer in the league last year, back for more. The Denver Broncos and the New York football Giants. Al Fauci and Dennis will bring it all to you Monday night at 9 Eastern, right here on ABC. Boy, that ought to be a dandy. Heading over there. After I know you are. Talked to Brian last night. He called right in the middle of our meeting. Yeah, he did. Broke our meeting up. <laughs> Sims to throw. Going deep. B.J. Johnson's his intended receiver. It's incomplete. Errol Hood kept his ground. I was talking to Chris Sims yesterday, and I was kind of kidding about, you know, the father-son thing with Phil. And uh, just finding out how Phil and uh, he handled it, his way Brian and I handled it through Michigan and now. And uh, he said he was going to he said he was going to be talking to his daddy. Because his dad's a Giant fan, you know, so uh, he's going to be pulling for the Giants. I'm going to be pulling for the Broncos, and um, but it's a, it's it's a, it's a it's a great thing to. You never expect it from your son, but it's it's more fun watching him go through it than when you go through to it yourself. Yeah. Saw that Fresno State Wisconsin score. Still a surprise going on, 29 to 20 as they go into the fourth quarter. And we'll check in. We got a penalty. First, before we head to John Saunders in New York. And let's see what the flag's about. Well, maybe we'll find out what the flag's about. Boy, second illegal block of the day. Don't see that called that often, and we've seen it twice already. Of an illegal crackback block on the offense, 15 yards. We'll still have second down. So the big penalty backs it up to the 40 yard line as we take a look at our Pacific Life game summary. Ronald Curry, those numbers haven't improved too much. He did have the touchdown run that kind of sparked North Carolina to tie things up at 14 at one point, but then it's been 17 unanswered points. By the Longhorns, yeah. there's Chris Sims numbers just around hovering a little bit above 50 percent. E.J. Johnson's been his favorite target today so far with five catches. Second and 21. Sims going to run here. Chris 
Oh, he takes a beating. He doesn't do much sliding, does he? <laughs> well, it was Shanahan trying to throw a block for him. Let's check in in Times Square Stadium now. Well, Northern Illinois. Wow. Trying to stay with their big brothers. Third down and eight. Quick drop. Sims incomplete. That one was intended for Sloan Thomas. And he probably should have had that one. 13 minutes left punting situation for Texas. They're in front of a capacity crowd at Texas Memorial Stadium. And again, riding a nine-game home winning streak. Looking for number 10 in a row. And they have not started 2-0 to start a season since 1996. And they won't keep that number six ranking very long if they don't win this one. They do have a 17-point lead, but they've had to work hard for it against an outman so far, North Carolina team that's been hanging tough. Punt's going to sail to the end zone. And so it'll come out to the 20. Trying to keep that ball the, from going out of bounds or in the end zone. <laughs> Didn't quite keep it in there. He's been the best back today for North Carolina. And he's going to be running left side behind that Wolfster and Wilson in there. Broken tackle right there. A good running back needs to do that. Break a tackle. Carolina, Carolina first quarter had the ball 10 and a half minutes. The rest of the game till now, they've only had it 11 minutes. Texas has had it nearly 20. Curry throws on the run, incomplete. Intended for Bosley Allen. As well as he moves as far as a runner, and they say the difference probably between Curry and Darian Durant, who we haven't seen today. Curry scrambles to run. And Durant scrambles to throw and can. He seems to be able to find guys when he's on the move, yeah, he, and that's what Ronald's really had trouble with. And, and, and Ronald is just a little, just a little too nonchalant. I mean, you need to get some fire out there on the field. You know, he's a quiet guy, easy going. I understand that, but you, you got to have some fire in you. He's only hit one of his last ten passes. This is a quarterback draw, and that's not the way you want to draw it up. Derek Johnson again, the freshman linebacker. Got a little swagger going on. Yeah. Marcus Tubbs is a guy that forced it inside. And they talk about Curry, Curry being a captain. He's a great kid. He's very bright. But there doesn't seem to be any out, outward signs of leadership. No clapping in the hands. Uh, he, he's not energetic, whereas the other guy, Durant, he's a fiery guy. Makes good decisions, makes plays, scrambles to make plays. And, he, and, he, and he's always looking for something down to it. As you looked at other scores, I guess the score of the day, Georgia Tech 70, maybe 7. Out. Curry, deep ball for Allen. He didn't quite get it. Nice job by Roderick Babers to break it up. They were stride for stride. Texas has always been known for good defensive backs, in particular good corners. And Babers and Jammer certainly doesn't do anything to, to hurt that reputation. That's right. Curry threw this ball a long way. It was right on the money. Good play defensively. Funny situation for Lafferty. This one. Again, into the wind. They ain't getting anything. That just died. Uh, nothing into the wind. Only a 30-yard kick. Texas will have it at their own 32 with a 17-point lead when we come back. Here's a guy that's on the number two spot on the all-time sack list in North Carolina history and doesn't even have a tackle today. So he's been neutralized by the scheme and the size of the Texas Longhorn. Well, the scheme was, you know, not let him disrupt... Chris Sims, bad exchange, has to eat it. Like he never quite had the handle from his center. He's pointing himself as if to say, my fault. Yeah. 
Check in with Lynn. Well, Brad, you know, they call him the Texas Longhorn, but for Chris Sims, it was a short horn that has left him ready to play this ball game. When he was a freshman, every time he dropped back to pass, a horn would sound after three seconds, trying to get him to throw the ball very quickly. He said he heard it all the time when he was a freshman. Because now, he hardly hears it, and it's a good thing, because he's had a lot of heat all day. Boy, is he ever. Back up center is in there. That might have been the problem for the exchange. Yep. This one's clean, and now he's going to throw. Looked like he wanted to have a draw play or play action. None of it looked very pretty, and then he got hammered after he threw it. David Thornton let him have it, and he's talking to his running back as if to say, hey, you know, a little yeah. help. Yeah. <laughs> Block that guy, huh? Well, Somebody hit him. Give me some help. Benson was out there. Bob's talked about his lack of blitz pickups and that type of thing, and that might have been just the case there. They got his quarterback hit. It's a tough situation for Mac Brown trying to get your 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 freshman Benson, number 32, into the ball game without getting your quarterback killed. Yeah. Because you know, if I were the quarterback, I'd be sure if he didn't run the ball, I'd say, "Now this is who you block," and I'd point him out. Down the middle. Oh. D.J. Johnson would love a second chance at that one. Because not only did that ball get there in a hurry, but he was way in front of the guy that was trying to defend him, and he might have gotten a big gainer out of this. Well, he had a lot of running room, too, and he couldn't hit it. Watch this. This is going to be right on the money. you got to remember, these guys are young. This guy's Johnson's second year, Williams in his second year, Chris Sims is starting his eighth game at Texas. He's a junior. We're going to be good around here for a long time. Ryan Bradford to punt again. Nice kick. All the way back to the 20 is Aiken. Aiken. And Aiken found a little avenue. All the way back to the 47. The penalty marker. In fact, two of them down at the 35. Coming back. Dexter Reed, I think, is the guy that got one of the blocks. Might have been the one they didn't need. Illegal block in the back. All coming back. Gets one clean block and one that isn't. Good to be right up here. Take a look at this. First one was clean, that one wasn't. Good call by the officials sure being was. on top of it. Yep. Getting it right. So instead of being down at the 42-yard line of Texas, try the 25-yard line of North Carolina. 11 penalties against the Tar Heels today. And Darian Durant's coming in at quarterback. So the switch has been made. complete on his first toss and it's Sam Aiken who just returned that punt and it's going to be first down ABC Sports presentation of college football brought to you by Budweiser with a crisp clear refreshing taste you'll find in no other beer new Nivea for men after shave ball more evolved skin care the 2002 Pontiac Bonneville luxury with attitude and Sears where else a little over 11 minutes to go in the ball game. A 31-14 Texas lead, but North Carolina trying to get something going here offensively. And Durant's going to go down, and a penalty marker flies in for about 20 yards in the secondary is where the call came from. Durant does not seem to be as good a runner as Curry, but he escapes trouble better, and he's a more accurate passer. It is a holding call on North Carolina. And D.D. Lewis says, let's take him back, ref. Ten-yard penalty backs him up to the 26-yard line. Time permitting, want to stay tuned for the thrifty car rental postgame report. John and Terry will have scores and highlights from across the country. 
Some possible surprises in the making. Some that aren't so surprising. Some that are kind of lopsided. Hey, the biggest surprise going so far has been Fresno State. Yep. They were still leading by nine yeah. the last time we saw a score. It was before today. Here's a quick toss. Wide out screen. Was that read beautifully by Roderick Bader? you got to get the block out there. Aiken's got to throw a block to help him out. The, the guy in front right here has got to get the block. He was busy trying to get around Vasher. Vasher kind of had a hold of him. Yeah, a little bit. He held his jersey. So now it's second down and 23. And there aren't too many in the playbook for this one. And look over to the coach and say, hey, Coach, you call this one. Yeah. Coach, you call this one, and I swear I won't check out of it. <laughs> Durant lost one long. Nobody home. Closest man would be Isaiah Robinson. And it's incomplete. Third down and long. For the season, and they've only played two games. Duran has completed 55% of his passes. Going two touchdowns and two interceptions. And uh, Ronald Curry is at like 42% and has no touchdowns all the year throwing the football. So Duran has had better stats and has moved the ball better, made more plays. And he's just a redshirt freshman. North Carolina's been awful on their third down conversions again today. They've missed their last seven. Oh, boy. And it's Derek Johnson, and that was just a two-handed yeah. chest bump. And he really did him a favor. He did. He didn't hit him. <laughs> number 11, just giving number 11 a couple of fists in the back to knock him down. This is why they think this kid's going to be so good. Right here, he just comes in unabated, as they say. And right here, he's going to hit him and just kind of touches him. <laughs> Oh, he's got some speed. Lafferty to punt. His leg's getting tired. Taken by Vasher. Oh, what a block Vasher got. He got two. He's got the sideline. He's going this time. Touchdown, Texas. just bought himself a Chevy player of the game. <laughs> 44 yards. Touchdown. He almost got in earlier. Couldn't tightrope the sideline. Went out. Led to a touchdown. This one's just a touchdown by himself. Well, as good as he is, he got a lot of help from his friends. Right there on the left. Another one by Knight. Another one by Jeffrey. Hightower got the first one. That was a bone cruncher. That's the one that got him to the corner. Mangum's extra point is good. Nathan, you've had yourself a game, son. Basher, the punt returner. This time he takes it to the barn. Longhorns 38-14. is a new school record, 148 yards in a single game in punt returns, and it includes a 44-yard touchdown a moment ago that has given the Longhorns a 38-14 advantage. Breaks the record of Johnny Johnson against Boston College way back in 1977. So that one's been in the books for a while, and now they'll have a new page in their 568-page media guide. <laughs> Wait a minute, now 568 pages in Carolinas. Carolina, how many pages they got? I got it. 260, 284 for Carolina. So about 200, almost over 200 pages more. I'm going to send Texas the bill for my shoulder surgery for carrying that thing around for the last week. I think it's the biggest one in, in all of NCAA Division I, except Notre Dame. But it's heavier because the pages are a little thicker. Oklahoma's is not skinny either. <laughs> well, they use these things for recruiting and for, uh, for fundraising and donor giving, you know. They put everything in it that they can imagine. 
check in with Swanee. Well, you're, you're talking about the media guy. I have it right here. <laughs> here it is, all 500 pages of it. It's over five and a half pounds. Look at this. You know how much it would cost to send this in the mail? That's over seven bucks posted, baby. Uh, right uh, here. That's a good one. Durant, nice pass on a slant, complete. And a first down, and then some. Sam Aiken gets free. Aiken heading to the sideline, run out of bounds at about the 48-yard line, but he got 28 on the pass and catch. That's what they say about this uh, kid Durant, that he just makes plays. He's not, he's not pretty, he doesn't have a good delivery. Of course, Aiken made a nice reception and run after the catch to so help him out. First down near midfield, trailing by... 24 to the number 16 in the land. Durant zips another one outside. That one had some heat on it. Out of bounds at the 45 to Bosley Allen. So they're going to be about uh, two and a half yards shy of a first down. We'll see where they need to go as our first and 10 is presented by Pontiac. Got to get it down just inside the 43 yard line. Only the sixth play for Carolina in Texas territory today. Inside handoff, Williams all wrapped up. Jermaine Anderson was the first guy there. Senior defensive end out of Texas City, Texas. Number 89. You know, John Bunning, uh, he, he, he told you that he was eight years in the NFL before he took this job, and this is the only one he said he'd take. He worked for Kansas City and New Orleans. He worked for Jim, Jim Mora, Jim Haslam, and then he said, Dick Vermeil, he says, I've got a lot of Dick Vermeil in me. Yep. Played for him with the Eagles, yep. coached under him on the Super Bowl champion Rams of a couple of years back. And Durant trying to float one out there to Corey Bailey, and it's incomplete. Brad, you were talking about John Bunning, and when he played for Philadelphia, he, in his locker room was Carolina Blue. I mean, his little stall, he had everything draped on there, wore a blue T-shirt underneath his Eagle jersey, but, you know, he always kept his Carolina ring in his pocket from his class of 71. His hands got all gnarled up, and he couldn't wear it, but wearing it wasn't going to be a problem because he would always carry it with him. He came into his press conference when it was announced he was the head coach, and he had a Super Bowl ring on, and he had his North Carolina ring in his pocket and pulled that one out and said, we plan on getting another one of these because he was part of the 30th anniversary team, really, of the ACC championship for the Tar Heels back in 71. He was part of that team. Well, I think they've got a coach there now, Brad, that's going to stay there. It's going to build this program back to respectability. The way Mac Brown had it in the 10 years that he was there. Right. In the last two years he was there, they were 10 and 1. They were ranked in the top five in the country, but they couldn't win their conference. State. Yeah, couldn't beat Florida State. They couldn't win their conference. And I think the people of uh, Carolina, and especially the alumni, are a little bit upset with Mac leaving. And I don't think that's fair because all along he was honest with them saying, you know, I'm not leaving, I'm not leaving, I'm not leaving, all the way up to a Wednesday. And then on a Thursday, Texas came and just made this offer to him that he just couldn't refuse. Right. He's resurrected this Texas program back to the, the lofty area that uh, it used to be under Coach Royal. ABC's college football triple header continues next. It'll be Michigan and Washington. And then in prime time at 8 Eastern, number 17 Notre Dame faces Eric Crouch in the fourth-ranked Cornhuskers of Nebraska. Remember last year's overtime job? Crouch going in for the touchdown on the Irish home turf. And now the... Scenes have flopped to Lincoln, Nebraska tonight. And Brent and Gary and Jack Arud will be bringing you that game. There's Cedric Benson. Benson got off to a good start last week as his first ball game netted him 64 yards on 15 carries. Today he's got a touchdown run. You know, Mac Brown. <laughs> When they offered him the Texas job, he asked his wife, Sally, he says, what do you think? He says, what would your late father, who was a legendary coach in Tennessee, he said, what would he say about you being offered the job in Texas? He said, he, he kicked my butt if well, I didn't take it. it. Right. And walked the same sidelines as Darrell Royal. Yeah. One of the five top jobs, you know, in the country.
Penalty markers down as Benson took it out for what would have been a first down, but it's another illegal block. Boy, somebody's got great eyes out there for that call. Today. Oh, they, they must have been, they must have talked about that before the ball game, the <laughs> officials. Let's look for this one. Uh-huh. Our special of the day. <laughs> it was on the blackboard. <laughs> special of the day. The illegal chop block on the play. We're going to go half the distance, and we're still going to have third down. You know, you, you talk about the two schools. Uh, when you're at Carolina and you're a football coach, you're the second sport mm -hmm. at that school. And, and, and you come to Texas, that's the number one sport. The tradition at Carolina for football is not much. You've won three national titles and two, two uh, Heisman Trophy winners uh, have come through here. There's a lot of tradition. And the walls of the locker room or the hallway leading to the locker room are so filled with All-Americans you can't count them all. That was a nice throw down the middle. Sloan Thomas holds on to this one. And it's first down, Texas. And the recruiting, I mean, you know, just the state of Carolina is like 350 high schools that you recruit from your solid base. The state of Texas probably has over 1,000 high schools. We were asking Mac the other day about if any 10, that you wanted 10 kids out of the state, he says, how, I said, how many would you get? How many do you get? And he, and he said, it's so good, we get like eight out of the ten. And that's, that's outstanding. Sims rolls, had it batted in the air. Julius Peppers almost intercepted that. So Julius Peppers, who had an interception return for a touchdown earlier, Mind the folks in the Texas area and the North Carolina area that we've been talking about, not only about recruiting, but you'll be staying with us, and it's nice to have you with us, for the next five minutes and 45 seconds. Some of the country is, a uh, good portion of the country is going to be going to our second game, and that's Michigan and Washington. And Jackson's waiting on the call on that one. Oh, now we're going to have a good game. Oh, boy. Oh, boy. Let's check in Times Square Stadium in New York right now with Johnson. Wow. That's pretty impressive. That is, because that's not an easy place to yeah, play. You for. go into Madison and you beat Barry Alvarez on his home, home turf. That's saying something. Big old fullback Matt Trissel. This rammed head on with Quincy Monk and Mercita Perry and carried him out close to a first down, a little bit short. As we're under five minutes. Eighth different receiver Chris Sims has hit today. So he's mixed it up well. He's not going to come out of this with the most glaring of statistics, but he's been knocked around and he's made some good decisions. He's had some drop balls. He's made some perfect passes. And he's 17 out of 35. So And he needs all the work he can get. I mean, this, you know, it's a new season. I think he's going to have a great year, but it's just, like I say, it's just his third year playing. It's only his eighth start. The most passes he's thrown in a game yeah. because last week was career high, 17 out of 33, and now he's percentage-wise not quite that good, but he's thrown two more passes today. And, and, and this year he's the guy, and, and he's got to get the timing down with these young receivers. You got to do one thing in practice, but to do it in a game and to see how they're going to react is another thing. So Brian Bradford will punt. Whoa, they got close. They also got the punter, but no flag. And Bradford saying, hey, ref, I got hit in the ankles. <laughs> I thought he did too, but I guess not. Danny Davis was the guy putting on the heat. So North Carolina will take over following the kick. Let's see. Yeah. Not too bad, I guess. No, 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 that's a little bit of an acting job. <laughs> well, you talk about the Big 12. Look at the four teams, Oklahoma, Nebraska, Texas. You know, any one of those teams could win the Big 12, and any one of them could win a national championship. Sure. I mean, you talk about a, str a strong conference. Loaded. Here's a shovel pass. Parker made a tough catch. Penalty markers down again. We've had some flags today, I'll say that. 
and as far as, excuse me, Brad, I just go say as far as, as far as, uh, not another one. Oh boy. Yeah, that must be the uh, special of the day. Yeah. It is the hot plate special. Yep. It's right next to the meatloaf. 19 punts, 19 penalties today between the two. And I'm not sure I've seen this call in the last three years, and we've had it four times today. At least. Of an illegal chop block on the offense. We're going to go half the distance to the goal. We still have first down. And keep in mind, it's been on both teams, not just on one team. So you can't say, well, you know, one team's offensive line or one team's wide receivers with the illegal crackbacks, whatever. They've called them both ways. First down to 20 now. Barry and Durant on the shotgun. Fires out incomplete, intended for Aiken. And it'll bring up second down at 20. We showed you the uh, the top 11 and all the, the four teams of the Big 12 that are ranked up there. You would think they'd knock each other off. The good thing for Texas and Mac Brown is they do not play uh, Nebraska. Nebraska and Kansas State. Right. They have eight. Well, let's see. There's only two games out. They've got eight games in the state of Texas, and they like to count that. Big 12 championship game in Irving on December 1st as right. part of the package. And the only time they go out of the state is Missouri and Oklahoma State. Here's Durant running. And picking up positive yardage. Short of the first down. But, and as uh, Bob was talking about, you look there, and they play Oklahoma in the Cotton Bowl, of course, at Oklahoma State, at Missouri. Everything else is in the state of Texas, at least, if I'd not circle. at home. I'd circle those two. And then that was... Uh, and then look for the Big 12 championship game somewhere. Third down at 12. Well, they've looked like the number six team in the country, I think, today. They haven't been picture perfect, but they've been good enough. The thing that's been impressive today has been... Well, Keith, as you know, Texas put it to North Carolina pretty good this afternoon. Red Robin on this 12-yard run here gets them up to 44 points. The players... Went to head coach Mac Brown, said, let's not kick the extra point so we can finish at 44 in honor of Cole Pittman, who died in a car crash in February.